All right. Let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, can I, can first I say thing... something off the record before you start recording? Oh, we're already recording. Well, not really. Uh, that, that should okay. say. Weren't you the guy that just complained about the off the record discussion I hate a moment you ago? All. Are you recording? <laughs> yes. It's it's it's, uh, it's saved for, for posterity. All right. So, uh, first things first, though, uh, and that is you guys leveled up after uh, the Battle of Hatton's Farm. And uh, so, before we before we jump into the game, I would just want to uh, uh, have each of you. To, um, so, you guys all went to fourth level, and I'm curious as to the choices you may have made as far as uh, uh, certain elements or what what changed about your characters. Chuck, go first. What 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 is different about Wraith? uh at fourth level well i i went ahead and took the uh, second level in rogue okay so there's a bunch of skill improvements that may or may not become useful at, at any given time and but the uh second level rogue gets evasion oh so that's that is pretty that, awesome that's the biggie for me so now if i make a reflex saving throw for area of effect stuff i take no damage instead of half evasion is excellent is a, is a great feat to have yes evasion is the bomb it is uh so, that that pretty much it the skill points and evasion i mean that's enough really but well yeah basically you know the hit point increase but there's the, the there's no new feat there's no stat. yeah and a stat there's there's no uh and the, the stat at this point is is a half measure so it won't matter as far as uh, bonus interstitial ones yeah an odd number until the next stat level so yeah for the most part it's just uh, a bunch of additional skills and and the gotcha. ability to to get out of the way very cool. Well, that's a great ability to have. Gordon, what about Poe? How did uh, how did Poe uh, manage fourth level? I did this a while ago trying to remember. I mean, basically, he just got – he took a point in wisdom, which gets him a plus one, and, you know, points and skills and a, another new spell, although he, I didn't really add any spells because I didn't get another level. So, I mean, just basically, he's just better a little bit. Okay. Nothing big. All right, all right. Uh, uh, Arendar, Mike, what about uh, what about Arendar? What did what did he do for fourth? This uh, this is probably the hugest level he's probably ever going to have. Um, he went from an odd point of strength to an even point. Okay. So he got a plus one to attack and damage. The power attack went up from minus one to plus two to minus two to plus four. And then he got weapon specialization, which has damage. So he just well, he's got he, a lot of. He hits really, really hard with that Falcata now. Yeah, it, he got a lot of stuff. So yeah, just a couple things, but they all kind of. Uh, so basically, a Falcata, he just became a lot more deadly with. Gotcha, Andrew. Uh, did you have you had a chance to level your guy up yet, or no? Um, I started putting it into the one sheet. And, okay. Um, it just basically told me I got to stop wearing pantyhose and drinking liquor from a jar. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, those are good lessons to uh, to learn, regardless. So, so uh, anything interesting? Cool uh, tips than I get from my sheet. Things so. just aren't working the way I would expect them to. Okay. Um, so don't be surprised if I pull out some surprise spells. Okay. Um, yeah, or, I would think the biggest thing for you is. Two second level spells. So do things that you wouldn't expect. <laughs> okay. I mean, more good. so than usual. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Jennifer, what about uh, Vondra? You, you sent me. You sent me your sheet, but uh, any any interesting things that you were that were especially appealing? Uh, Vondra's got the ability to charge his weapons, so that spear is going to become a lot more dangerous. So two uh, d six electrical damage on top of its regular damage. So that's kind of big. That's awesome. that is very helpful. Um, let's see what else increased in um, uh, initiative with a feat and same spells, but more of them. Gotcha. All good. Okay, sounds good. And finally, what about uh, Ono? Um, Eric, what how did Ono what what's Ono's fourth level look like? Um, Ono, um, you know, I, I went back to the um pathfinder um character mancer and I, I um tried to advance ono to level four mm -hmm. somehow i advanced him back to level one and <laughs> um uh so i'm just rebuilding oh, ono um just as he was uh because uh, 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 i uh 
save the old. Uh, uh, oh no! And okay, I'm, I, I'm just adding one level. Um, and I, I got um, but uh, for my fourth mm-hmm. level feats, I, I get a um. Uh, I, I'm at plus four base attack um nice plus four fort save plus four re- reflex save um plus one will save I, I got the still mind feat and um i got a uh key power to uh uh, uh use um from my key pool and I, mm-hmm. i'm still trying to figure out uh which key power to cho- choose Okay. All right. Well, sounds cool. Uh, level four, I think, uh, uh, is uh, is going to be good. But in the meantime, last time we played, you guys finished up the battle of Haddon, as we're referring to Haddon's farm, rescued both Kristen and Haddon from the Scourge outriders along with all the goblins and that kind of stuff, and killed, uh, finished off Boreas, a half-orc uh, Scourge member who had a variety of interesting stuff on him, not the least of which was a couple of um, things that would normally be considered uh, typical of arcane spellcasters as opposed to divine spellcasters. Now, as you know, the Scourge is against arcane spellcasters. They are uh, they don't think that that should even exist and they look to purge them. Uh, so this guy having arcane material on him might be indicative of... Uh, of some sort of frigging in the rigging going on with those Sargav and Scourge guys. But nevertheless, you guys made your way uh, uh, away from the farm after resting the, the night there and moved off to the northwest towards the fire forest. You could see even in the morning, you could see smoke clouds on the horizon, uh, you know, clouding the way as you approached through the tall grasslands of the Darkland Plains. Um as you were going through there, you were approached by horsemen, which turned out to be the Ikuje Elves, Ikuje Elvish Cavalry, um, that were patrolling in this area and uh, had come across some about a half dozen halfling raiders from the fire forest. Um, they had captured them, they had them on ropes, but they came by and they were like, uh, what are you guys doing out here? You guys told them, you know, we're heading for the Lyceum. A, a gate pass has fallen to the Zargavans, which they didn't know um, because it's only been about four or five days since then uh, or maybe a week. Uh, and so the, the elves didn't know, but they were, uh, you know, they, they immediately sent guys out to, um, you know, go notify the, the elvish villages along the plains uh, that this was happening. They, they admitted they, they don't like the Sargavans any more than you guys do. Uh, and they were able to give you a couple of gifts. The first one was, is essentially safe passage across the plains. Um, they had been patrolling. There are a lot of Akuje patrols out here to watch for exactly what they found, which was the Hobbit raiders sneaking out of the fire forest and trying to raid elven villages and that kind of stuff. But they also gave you a an ornate wooden case that contained a number of little sort of pottery uh, pots that they told you contained a... Um, a, an ungent that you would put you could put on your body that would protect you from a lot of the fire the heat uh, of the fire forest essentially what it is it's it's a um, it's a lotion that gives you resist elements 20 fire uh so hopefully you guys will be able to get through the fire forest which they admitted is in high dudgeon right now so i mean they were they were saying look we haven't seen the fire forest this fiery for many seasons um, and they're worried that there's some sort of magic inside that's going on in the fire forest that's ex- exacerbating the effect when you guys told them that you were headed to the lyceum they were like okay stay to the path take the elf road it's probably clear be careful uh because the fire forest is 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 extra active right now um and just you know be, be aware of where you know where you are and the and the hazards and you should be okay um but they also you know they also said use the use this stuff um follow the elf road uh, it's about 12 miles uh cross the bridge uh past that bridge you will come to an elvish village inside the fire forest tell them you know us and he tells you his name is ruvayan dajin 
uh, he says, tell them Ruvain uh, of the Akuje said that you were friends. Um, Hadad knows, uh, you know, he's like, Hadad knows uh, our ways. They will, they will take you and they will, they will protect you, but look for that village. And then they trotted off uh, after handing you guys the box and uh, saying their, uh, you know, sort of formal elvish goodbyes. They continued on their way sort of in the southwest, uh, uh, southwesterly uh, through the plains. And I'm just going to go to the regional map here. Do you guys have all your characters updated on the on the primary sheet on this primary uh, thing? All your hit points and everything updated? Not quite. On, but On these soon. guys. All right. Um, We'll, I'll show you the regional map. Essentially, what you do is the plains kind of go in a in a northeast to southwest line uh, along the uh, you know the southeastern edge of the fire forest. You guys had crossed the river after leaving Haddad's farm uh, as you left Gate Pass, came out of the mountains and into the plains, and it was a patrol that that sort of caught up with you in the plains. You are probably about. 10 miles from the start of the fire forest and the and the opening of the elf roads you can clearly see the skies above the forest are filled with smoke uh and they will tell you uh before they leave that there are some things that you really need to watch out for um you know when you're in the fire forest and they're like have, have any of you ever been in the fire forest before and Haddad's like oh yeah i've been there many a time blah, blah, blah. yeah but it could be uh you know he's just full of shit as usual um but they will tell you that since most of you don't know much about the fire force you should be you should be uh, um you should watch out there are several things you should watch out for one of them and a constant worry are smoke clouds uh smoke clouds billow through much of the fire forest and they can sweep upon travelers in moments um they if you get caught in a smoke cloud um you know the the smoke itself they 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 typically lack oxygen it's hard to breathe in you can uh you can choke uh you can become nauseated if you get caught in a smoke cloud uh, even more dangerous than the smoke clouds are cinder clouds, uh, which are clouds that carry burning debris. The, the this is uh, you know stuff that has you know sort of caught up in the air and it's, it's embers and ashes and things like that. Um, you get caught in one of those, uh, you you could potentially you know these embers have a tendency to get under people's collars and within their clothes, and in some cases they can catch you on fire in addition to being uh, stinking and choking smoke. There's a lot of flaming brush, as you can imagine, in the fire forest, hence the name. Um, most, if not all, of the plant life in the fire forest is designed to survive in the fire forest. A lot of it will be flaming, uh, which means that without protections the protection provided for the by the engines for example you will take damage if you if you grab it you touch it um you fall into it you are dropped into it you are thrown catapult style into it uh there can be uh there could be i mean you could you could get burned and you can catch on fire there are also something he mentions this which you know which is probably the one that gives you the most pause he says the fire curtains uh fire curtains are the result of an, an unusual and sometimes intense difference in pressure caused by terrain features and air currents inside the fire floors. Typical curtain is probably 10 to 20 feet across, 10 feet high. It's usually pretty visible uh, because of its incredible heat, but they will sweep through an area very quickly sometimes. And if you get caught in one, that can be very dangerous. They're uh, even hotter than the normal fires that you're likely to get. So as you guys traverse the the plains, you can see the smoke. Uh, you can see off in the distance, um, you know, that the fire is there. But you do seem to be Hadad, Hadad is basically telling you, I know the way to the elf, the, the entrance to the elf road. I can get I can get us there. No problem. And he takes the lead. Is there anything that you guys want to do before you get there to the to the entrance to the fire force or anything like that? Or any questions that you want to ask, and, and if you want, before before the elves leave, you can ask them questions as well. Well, the the elves said that, that you're muted, Mike. So we got to ask about the ROUSs, but other than that, <laughs> ROUSs, rodents of unusual size. <laughs> I don't think they exist. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're good then. Let's go. <laughs> so the the ungent stuff that they gave us is supposed to be good for what, like. So you've got enough. They've given 24 hours or something like that. 
the box is pretty much full and they'll say and these will this the, one pot of this stuff will last a person uh you know probably 12 hours two two pots 24 hours there's enough in there to last all of you including torrent and um and Haddad and Crystal, Kristen, uh, for probably a week, maybe eight or nine days if you go gentle with it. Essentially, from a magical standpoint, it gives you fire resistance 20. Right. No, okay. That's good. I was just thinking if it was something that lasted 24 hours or whatever, then we could be putting it on as we're going. But it, it's probably based on the potential limitation worth waiting until we actually get there. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're in no danger right now. Although every once in a while, I mean, in addition to the smoke, you will occasionally see little showers of embers coming down, especially as you get closer. Um, your first look at the fire forest as you sort of come over this little rise in the grassland. And there's a, and there's uh, in these grasses, there's a lot of scorched areas and stuff like that where embers have caught a little bit of the, of the, of the grass and burned out a little bit. But once you get a look at it, I mean, it looks like a conflagration. It looks like a, a forest on fire. And you're like, how the flip do people live in there? Because they're hobbits, the, the, uh, the evil hobbits, they live in the fire forest. Uh, the Lyceum and the town that surrounds it, which is called Sequin, by the way, uh, is, um, you know, it is within the fire forest. Uh, and you, but, but looking at it, this place, you're just like, how would anybody survive in it? Because it looks like a forest yeah. fire, essentially. So do we, do we see the sign that says now entering California? <laughs> Yeah. Welcome to Northern California. Um, yeah, it's it's like that in some cases. I mean, you. I mean, it's very uh, and they were kidding. I mean, all of the trees seem to be on fire. Now, the interesting thing is that they don't seem to be consumed by this fire. Um, they're just on fire, but the, they seem to be the kind of trees that can stand that. So one assumes that there are places within the fire forest where there is less fire. Um, but the entrance to the Elf Road is not one of those places. It is pretty hairy looking. And as you approach, you can feel the heat coming off of this place. Uh, and it, you're just like, that is, that is, it, without the ungent, you guys would be like, this is going to, this would be too much. So, <laughs> you, you know, I'm assuming you send a silent note of thanks to those elves again for, uh, for pro providing you this, uh, this material, because it will, it will absolutely keep you from, uh, from getting injured going into the fire force. Yeah, so I'm going to lotion up with SPF 9000. Okay. As am I. I mean, once we get there, obviously. <clears throat> well, close enough that it matters. Okay. Though that though the magic of the of the of the grease uh, um, still protects your skin against, you can still feel uh, the heat it's intense it's withering and it comes in like as you get closer you can feel it like coming in like blasts off of the trees um the fire forest has created for those of you of a meteorological bent the fire forest has created some very weird updrafts uh and and stuff where it causes these big gusts of superheated air to kind of like blow out into the into the grasslands all of the grassland area is um is scorched and burned around the fire forest, um, you know, just by, by, by virtue of being proxemic to that heat. Um, there are thick, uh, um, you can smell acrid smoke as you approach and begin to and, to, and look at entering the fire forest. Um, sometimes black, sometimes orange. Uh, in some cases, you, I mean, you, you, you have this smoke that you go through, you can't hardly see an arm's length in front of you, but the fierce dry wind often blows the smoke away and you can you can see again powered by backdrafts and sort of these weird dramatic valley winds the gusts snap these gusts of wind superheated air uh you know sort of snatch at your clothing and during lulls in the wind uh, uh fingers of flame reach out from the smolding undergrowth and uh you know try and uh and get at your clothing and that kind of stuff it's always threatening uh, it's always there, you know, singeing your ropes and your backpack straps, uh, heating and melting your uh, your boot heels, that kind of stuff. Your eyes are stingy uh, with tears. Your nostrils are breathing in this stuff. Uh, um, you uh, that's that's the fire forest of Inadotar. So does this mean I have to don't, I don't have to shave? Uh, you don't probably have to shave. No, nice. Just burn it off. 
I just, so, don't put the engine around where you want the hair to go. It could be gone. <laughs> you could do so, cool patterns. So let's look at a quick map. So Torrent still has some of these maps. So you can sort of see it here. Uh, you guys, so you started out in Gay Pass. Now, this is in the mountains, obviously. You've progressed along this black line. You crossed. Uh, Had Haddad's farm is probably about here, uh, near the river but not on the river so reasonably close uh you guys would have pat you guys would have gone over this river at a, at a at a nearby bridge of which there are several uh into this plain area in between the fire forest and the and the uh thing this is the area in here where you ran into the elvish the akuja elves that came through here and you kept going further and further into uh in towards the fire forest the elf road starts about there um is is where it that makes sense and where now, within all of this mess is the the lyceum that we're trying to get to so according to her maps the lyceum is about uh here is about here okay, okay. uh so you have to pass through some things so um the bridge that the elves were talking about is around here you can and there are weirdly there are uh bodies of water inside the fire forest so let me see if this works okay can you guys see that mm -hmm. okay so there is a river uh the elves told you the name of it but you can't remember it and you see that little black part right there that's about where the bridge is so it's about 12 miles into the into the uh into the fire forest i'll go ahead and get rid of this you don't need it hold on a sec oh that's not right why is it well i guess we have to keep it so uh um yeah to go in there that bridge goes over uh, a small river you can get there the best way is to go through the bridge follow this river which is where there's going to be less fire if you were to just strike out across the fire forest that would be pretty dangerous but generally speaking the idea is go to the river there the town that he's talking about will be on this sort of internal lake the elvish village that he's talking about and you could follow the river up there and then from there what you might do probably the best way at least according to torrent is that once you once you reach there you would probably strike off at that point um towards the towards the lyceum sort of as the crow flies through the through the through the uh, fire forest there does that make sense? Okay. All right. So uh, you guys put on your ungents uh, and uh, proceed into the fire forest. You're not long in there, maybe half a mile or so, uh, where you come across um, what looks to be something in the forest path. Uh, it looks like maybe at first it just looks like a bump uh, or some bumps in the path. But as you get closer, you get within about 50 yards of it, you can see what looks to be, well, potentially bodies uh, in the in the path. Do you want me to scout it? Or do you want to just roll up on it? No, we should scout it. I want to scout around it and let us roll up on it. See if right. there's anything out there. Well, I'll dismount and hand the reins to my horse to. By the way, the horses hate this place. They are oh, yeah. unhappy. Well, they're, they're going to be jerky in about 50 miles. So, because <laughs> we didn't put any engine on them. Well, they seem to, they're, I mean, they're tough beasts and, and they seem to be okay, but they are unhappy here. Um, and they are losing some mane hair and tail hair and stuff like that. So I'm going to hand the reins to, to my brother. Okay. And then I'm going to stealth uh, uh, beside the path. I, I know that there's, there's like burning and all the other stuff, but there's something to sort of hide behind in most cases, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the foliage itself is on fire. With the ungent on you, you can sort of step in there and it's not going to, I mean, you could, it's, it's a little odd because you can, you can sort of step into, uh, well, not into like open fire, but you can certainly stand close to it without being as injured as you thought you might be. Um, the ungent is protecting you. Uh, but even so, it makes you nervous to sort of get it. But there is cover. Uh, there's a lot of, frankly, and I use the term loosely, plant life. It's on fire. 
but there's yeah. a lot of it there. It is a forest. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to navigate a, a stealthy path okay. in, be in between all the burning bushes and, and make my way up to okay. whatever it is we see in the path. All right. Uh, you can move pretty close. Do you want to uh, roll a stealth roll or do you want to just kind of like go through there? Yeah. All right. So, yeah, as you move closer, you uh, um, you see that they're not moving. And uh, you as you get closer, you get within about 15 feet of them, you know, very cautiously. And you're moving really quietly. There's a lot of ambient noise, too. So it's easy to be it's a little easier to be quiet, in your opinion, because, you know, there's a lot of popping and cracking of the fire and stuff like that. So the noise, the minimal noise you make doesn't wouldn't necessarily attract attention. Uh, but the closer you get, you realize that it looks like three people. Um, they are uh, smoldering and uh, they look to be pretty burnt. They're not moving. They're also a bit scattered about. Uh, they're not like clustered together. Uh, at least two of them have that sort of classic, um, you know, the sort of like fetal position that you see burn victims have, um, you know, that, that they sort of like tighten up as they try to protect them, themselves in their last moments from whatever is burning them. Um, one of what them is, seems to be more stretched out. What do they appear to be? Looks like humans, humans yeah. or elves. You can't tell from here. And frankly, a lot of the, at least the ones you can see closely are, um, are really badly burned. It's hard to tell, but about about human elf size. They're not dwarves or hobbits or anything. Okay. So I'm going to continue to stealth and get a little bit closer. Okay. And then uh, at this point, uh, they could be the ambush, or they could be an ambush if they have some ability to make themselves okay. look worse than they actually are. But then the other part of that is they might also be the bait. So. Sure. I want to move move stealthily around, and if I'm at this point, I don't know exactly where we are, but stealth move stealthily around one side of the path, and and do the the listen and see if there's anybody sort of waiting for travelers to come down on that side. Okay. And if not, then I'll try to stealthily cross the path and get into the other side of it. Okay. Uh, all right. Give me a perception check. And what are the rest of you doing? Are you arming yourselves? Are you standing back? I'm, I'm assuming that you guys are sort of about 50 yards back from where, where Wraith is. Sort of that you stopped when you first spotted these things and then he moved forward to check it out. Is that more or less accurate? Yeah, no, we're, we're slowly moving forward. But yeah, we still haven't got to that area yet until he comes out and says it's okay. Okay. Uh, 26 perception. Okay, so yeah, you look at, and it, it, uh, to your eyes, at least uh, at two of those guys are definitely dead their bodies their skin is scorched they are blackened uh you know all three of them are missing all their hair and stuff like that so whatever happened to these guys they they were unprepared for the uh the problems of the fire forest but as you are watching you see the third one the one that is not sort of like curled up in himself you can see well it looks like maybe his chest is moving and then abruptly sort of quietly you can hear him sort of go <coughs> very quietly, very weak. Okay. But I don't see anything of an ambush nature or any other creatures off to one side of the path. No, you don't see anything like that. Then I'm going to try to maintain stealth and cross over to the other side. Okay. Well, on the, uh, the far side of where the bodies are. Yeah. The, the, I figure if I can stealth down, like if the bodies are here, I'll stealth past them and make those observations. Okay. And if I don't see anything on this side that looks like it would be an ambush setup or other creatures trying to use this as bait, then I'll cross over past them and then come back up the other side. Okay. Give me another perception check. Oof. Yeah, you have no problem getting Apparently over there I past step, them. I stepped over a bush that was trying <laughs> to light my junk on fire and I Ow! wasn't paying attention to anything uh, but that. Uh, you, uh, yeah, you get around there, you kind of look around, you don't see any evidence of a, an ambush planned or unplanned. Uh, you do look back at, you get a, you, from that position, you get a better look at the bodies. And it, for at least two of them, they are bodies. You do get the idea that it's possible that the other guy, the one who coughed, yeah. um, 
he's whispering something like he's you can see his his it, so if you look at him he's in as bad a shape as the other people from a burn standpoint he's scorched all his hair is burned off um you know he he's blistered and blackened uh you know his hands are are just you know stumps practically uh but it, and his lips are all sort of like peeled back you can see the jaw underneath um but he seems to be saying you could see his lips kind of like it looks like he's talking or saying something and every once in a while interspersed with these very quiet sort of <laughs> coughs uh he's alive but he looks to be in a very bad way you guys uh sort of in the back you guys can't see that it's it's too subtle for you guys to see from 30 to 40 yards right. away. yeah we're just staying put we're actually slowly moving forward until until Wraith says comes out and says everything's clear all right i'm gonna call them forward step out into the path again uh, on our side or, or the party side of, mm -hmm. of the bodies and wave them forward, and then I'm going to go to the guy who seems to be in bad shape but still alive. Okay, you sort of kneel down next to him and see what's see what's what. Yeah, I've got a dagger in the other hand. Okay, he's he's very badly burned, uh, and he, you know, he, but he does seem like that he senses you're there because you can see his eyelids, which were closed and 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 blistered, sort of flip open, and you can see his eyes are are underneath. Um, you know, they're. They're whitened, uh, you know, you're not sure that he can see. And the first thing he says is like, Everin, Ev Everin, is that, is that you? Some, some water, please, Everin. Everin, please, a little, little water. He looks almost like a zombie, except for he's talking. I mean, that's how damaged he is. All right. I need to see if I have something. I do. Oh, good. Um, what do you have? So, <laughs> so I'm going to take out the, the uh, Cure Light Wounds okay. potion, and I'm going to feed him that instead. Okay, you're going to give him a Cure Light Wounds. Okay, go ahead and roll the... Uh, uh, I have no idea what that does. So uh, Cure Light... D8 plus... D8 plus 5. D8 plus, D8 plus five? 5? Yeah. That's the standard. Yeah, and that's what you guys have. You want to roll that? Uh, sure. Can't do worse than I did. That's true. I'm sorry, D, D8 plus five. Sorry, I fucked that up. Well, I guess you can do worse if I did if you roll a lower die. Well, I, yeah, if I use a D4, that was it's what I was planning on. Actually, no, so wait. No, you couldn't because I rolled a one. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. I can't roll a zero. Um, so yeah, uh, so you and he chokes on it as you, you're giving a, as you sort of like drink this, drink this, and he's like, <laughs> and he starts to choke on it a little bit, and he gets up, he gets most of it down, and you can see that some of his blisters kind of fall back into his skin uh, and that kind of stuff, and his eyes are, I mean, you you think he still may be blind, um, but his eyelids do open more, and he kind of looks over at you, so maybe he can see. You know something uh he, his eyes look pretty damaged um his fingers and stuff like that uh you know kind of heal up a little bit but he's still he's still pretty messed up and you can see he's like you're you're not you're not everin where's where's everin where's where's my son where's my son and his wife they must be close by help them first i'll give him some water okay he, uh, he drinks a little more. He's like, I don't know who you are, stranger, but you've been very kind, but please help, help my help my son. <sighs> my, my son and his wife, they must be close by. And he, you can see him kind of like looking around, but his eyes are too toasty. He can't, he can't, it looks like he can't make out anything, yeah. like undifferentiated just sort of things. Where are they? Do you see them? Do you, do, uh, are you helping them? Are you? Uh, did, did you bring friends? Maybe they're helping them. Well, I do have friends, but the only two who are close to you are far gone. I'm sorry. Oh, no. No, not my son. Oh, and, oh we, we tried to we tried to escape. We came out of Gate Pass three days ago. But uh, I thought, I thought my spells would 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 keep us safe. 
in the forest, but it was to no avail. Are you, are you certain? Are you certain they're dead? I'll tell them to hold still. Okay. I'll go check. Uh, they're very dead. I'm not a medic, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I can figure this one out. These are as dead as, as, as dead of people as you have seen. <laughs> and then as the party continues to approach, hopefully, I'll go back and tell him that I'm certain. <clears throat> oh, my life is over. My son was, was my apprentice uh, at, at, at Gabal's school. I, 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 I taught him everything. He was, he was to take up the mantle of, 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 of our magic-using family. If, if he's dead, I have no reason to go on. I was trying to make for the Lyceum, but I don't think I can make it now, not in this condition. It's probably best. And he sort of like looks over at you. He's probably best that you let me join them or help me along. What's your name? My name is Dervil. I was a student at a, at, at Cabal's school in Gate Pass, but when the scourge came, I got my son and his wife, and we managed to we managed to get away. I'd hoped to make it to the Lyceum, but we got we got through the plains and avoided the the elvish the elvish patrols. But but once we got here, we we were we were woefully unprepared for the fire forest. A, a wave of fire, uh, twenty feet high, if it was if it was a foot, came over us. There was nothing we could do to avoid it, and uh, it 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 brought us to this in my head i want to think you probably should have stopped to talk to the elves <laughs> <laughs> but at this point i'm going to wait for the party to get up here Ed. because we have magic users who know people from cabals so they might mm -hmm. know this guy okay we have at least one priest that regardless of the fact that this guy's ready to cash it in now may be able to help him enough and then somebody else can sort of be his therapist because that's not my gig. But I'll wait until everybody else gets up so I can I can get some more information before I just help whack the guy. Well, as they're coming up, he will reach out to you and with one of these like burnt up claw hands and just sort of like put it on your forearm and be like, send me to Phrasma. Allow me to join my son. I ask, I ask you this one last favor. Well, I have people who are coming, and and if, if, falls if they don't if they don't think they can help you, I will grant your wish. But give me just a minute. Okay. All right. Fine. I'll sit here and suffer for a little more. <laughs> yeah, come on. You've you've suffered this far. What's another minute? <laughs> um. So yeah, so he's he quiets down and sort of lean back, uh, you know, against the there's just like a rock in the road in which he's sort of leaning up against, and you know, could hear him like coughing, and and, it, and to a certain extent, you can see that there's you know some tears coming out of his his uh, his scorched eyes, you know, and he's thinking about uh, you know what he's lost. Uh, well, the rest there's there's still some water in his body. <laughs> yeah, he's not he's, he didn't get turned into beef jerky. It's not a uh, well. That's what know. I'm saying. He could survive this. So. I'll wait until smarter people than me show up. Okay. And if this guy just needs to be sent to Phrasma, I can certainly help him with that. <laughs> well, I mean, not that way. Just, I understand he's burnt to a crisp and his kid and his, his daughter-in-law are dead. If he wants to go, I can do that for him. So you guys come rolling up and you can see, you see Wraith sort of kneeling down, uh, uh, looking at this, this hideous dude. Uh, his fingers are, you know, burnt off. His hair's all gone. I mean, you know, uh, his clothing is pretty much burnt to a little crisp. Some of it is melted into his skin by the force of the heat. Um, he's in a fair amount of pain, you can tell, and you can see that he's coughing. He's been talking with Wraith, but you're not 100% sure what they've been talking about. You couldn't, you could barely hear him even, even close up. I'm going to do a heel check, Les, to see if he uh, can be fixed. Or how close it can be fixed? So, <laughs> a, a natural twunzo? Okay. So, um, yeah, as far, I mean, with magical aid, absolutely he can be fixed. Um, but there's going to be, in your in your opinion, that's not going to, that's not going to fix some of the 
the thrallums. He's lost. He's lost some fingers, right? So the fingers, in some cases, have burned off. Those are not going to grow back from a potion of healing or even a cure light. He's going to. He would need restoration spells, which I don't know if you have or not, or if you want to waste them. Um, you know, his hair is gone. He's he's partially blinded by the by the damage to his eyes. Um, but more than that, I mean, he's he's damaged a lot, and he, he even if brought back magically he will still be heavily scarred um and there are some some parts of the damage that may never be uh repairable without some really significant magics i mean you could he he will live through this if you guys help him um but it doesn't sound like he wants to yeah so i'll ask poe his opinion of of we'll walk up and kneel down next to him and uh, introduce himself and uh, try to get filled in on what's going on once were that you, happens. Were you a student at Cabal's? No, I was not. Okay. No, I was. Vondra okay. was. Vondra Vondra. was. Okay. Uh, yeah, so he says the same thing to Poe. He's like, ah, my, my, my son is dead. His, my daughter-in-law is dead. I don't think I can make it to Lyceum. Uh, I, 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 and, and now I've lost even the will to bother it was my hope to escape but I, I i'm too badly hurt and i have no reason to go on send me along to phrasma so that i may catch up with my son i may still have time to join to join the, the river of souls being judged so that i may so that i may see him again in the in the abyss well we can heal you and we can get you to the lyceum um so you can continue your life if you wish to, but I'm certainly not going to make the judgment call of what you can and can't do with your life. Oh, you must, you must, you must finish me off. Send me along. <laughs> do me, do me that favor. I have no wish to live. The fallen man wishes to be sent along. We should honor his wish. Um, I think Bondrum's going to walk up and talk to him and hail him as a brother alumni dude <laughs> okay and, what do you uh, what do you say to the guy hey i'm gonna say um you've you've uh you've fought a battle here to live and i think we're glad to do you this service i'm just gonna ask of what magic did you see here brother what what have you seen in the, here in the fire forest what have i seen it was a column of flame <sighs> 50, 50 yards wide and, and 20 feet tall that came at us out of the out of out of the forest as as if possessed it was unavoidable we tried to to run back down the path and outside of the forest but it was so swift it overtook us without before we could even take a step did you see anybody that was wielding this power oh i think it I think it was just. Uh, I think it was just one of the hazards of the fire forest. It, it was. Uh, it just. But it came over us so quickly. There was nothing we could do. We could hardly. We couldn't avoid it. We tried. My spells. I. I'm an evoker. I. I you know. My spells are. I. I found them nearly useless. I'd spent so long in study at cabals to learn to learn to to evoke a fire of my own into into the world to to, to do battle and duel with other mages, but. It booted me nothing here in the fire for us to get such, such horrifying, horrifying power. Nothing at all, brother. There's absolutely nothing that you learned in your journey through this forest that would be of help to me, a fellow evoker. If you could find any other way to get to get to your to your destination, take that route. Do not travel in the fire forest. There is only death here. Wow, that's grim. Now, give me, uh, uh, Vondra, give me a quick perception check. Okay. And Titus, were you associated with Cabal's magic uh, school at all or no? Uh, there was an association. I wasn't a student there, but I was a gadfly about town. Okay. Give so me a perception check known. as well. Yeah. You, better sorry, than 11. A perception check when you get them all. Oh, sure. So all right. It's always a perception check with you. It's always a perception check. It's just. All right, let's see. Skills. Perception. Okay. 
15. All right. Uh, Vondram, I mean, this guy is so badly burnt that uh, you're like, well, his voice sounds kind of familiar. Maybe you knew him at the school or something like that, but you can't place him. Weirdly, Titus is like, you, Titus, you, you get the feeling like you think you may know this guy. He says his name's Dervil, or he said to Wraith that his name's Dervil, which doesn't ring any bells. But you feel like you remember this guy. It's hard to tell. His hair's all burnt off. He's all blistered, blackened, and stuff like that. But this guy looks a little familiar to you hmm. from Gate Pass, which would, uh, uh, you know, sort of validate that that portion of his story. But um, but yeah, I mean, you I mean, you, you think that maybe you had maybe met him before. Uh, but it would have been in some sort of context in, the, in a group of other people, maybe at a party or something like that. Did you and I do shrooms together? <laughs> oh, that was my my only vice was I couldn't eat. I, I, I couldn't help but eat as many shrooms as I could lay my hands on every night. It was a huge shroom party. <laughs> so are, are there any, I mean, obviously the guy wants to go, right? He's yeah. He's basically so, said to all you guys, you know, send me on. Uh, I, there's nothing for me here anymore. So, uh, Game so Pass this, has fallen. My family is gone. I this look is familiar, but this is to the party. Are there any other a questions? Good way for this or a guy? bad way? Do I? What's my sense? Um, he looks familiar, but he also you get a vibe from this guy, like, and your and your memory is is shaky, uh, and you're just like, man, I know this guy from somewhere, but the the somewhere you know this guy from, you're like, maybe there was some sort of unpleasant experience with this guy. Um, you know, uh, something. I don't know. It's, it's, it's something that there's something instinctually to you of that you're, you're hearing this guy and maybe you think you know him, and but you're equally think that maybe you didn't like him. Okay. Well, then I should probably cast a heal spell. <laughs> Um, brother, I, I feel like we should get you to Lyceum, and I think we can heal you up enough to get you there, and then someone there can put uh, some restoration spells on you. It's just not in us to, to kill somebody. Oh, you must do me this favor. Your I voice... Your That's voice sounds point. familiar. I do, do I know you? Were you a student at the school? Arendar would have to cover his eyes and look the other way and walk the other way whenever whenever uh, Titus says that. We don't kill people. Gimbals. Can I do uh, another perception check? Can I try again? I'm like sure. Yeah, I think so. Racking my es brain. Especially right? since Titus probably goes, I think I know this guy. 17. Better. Yeah, you actually, once, once you sort of like look beyond the scarring and you remember Dervil, he was, and then you're like, I know this guy. He was in a couple of your evoker classes. Not very powerful, but always talked like he was a huge badass. Older guy, uh, just a real pain in the ass in classes, asked all kinds of questions, lorded it up over everybody, um, you know, that kind of thing. Had a, had a wildly inflated sense of his own power. At best, he was a first or second level evoker uh, in your classes, but he always talked like he was an archmage. You're muted. That. I'm not saying anything. I'm just confused as to why he's on our path that offers us no information. I feel like I'm missing the angle. Yeah. Maybe he's got some treasure we can plunder. <laughs> Empty your pockets, ass. I don't have any pockets. My clothing is all burned up. I'm kidding. <laughs> There's some know. big diamonds laying on the road next to him. <laughs> we heal him up and take him to the Lyceum. But that would be and against if, his wishes. If you want to do yourself by then, I understand they have some very tall walls. That's oh, is not you. of the mind to heal someone who doesn't want to be healed. He's, yeah. he's a neutral character. Yeah. He would not Don do Grimm's it. not into it either. He's not going to. Yeah, at this Bernard's point, a good I'm guy, and he still would. If the guy, this guy at, wants to go, I don't want to point. use our magical ability to heal someone who doesn't want to be healed. I'm Even if whisper. he wasn't asked in school. I'm going to whisper in his ear, go be with your family, and then I'm going to execute him. You're going to just stab him like in the head or something? Well, I'm going to try to make it as painless and quick as possible. So base of the skull, something, dagger somewhere. Okay. 
that will be quick and, and relatively painless, considering his life is misery at this point. Hey, Tom, Can I hey, cast Dan. a glitter dust just to make it a little festive? <laughs> As he goes, he goes out with a, uh, uh, with a disco uh, party. With a disco party. It <laughs> 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 looks painful. Uh, Let me flay it off of you. Yeah, he. So yeah, you take a dagger and sort of just jam it into the back of his skull. His his skull fractures pretty easily under it. There's a lot of internal damage, and he's just like, <gasps> it just sort of like leans back against the ground. And uh, yeah, he's he is now dead. Um, you do see that uh, as you sort of look around now, you do see that the burned bodies in one in one case, there's one that has sort of a, a waxed leather backpack that was sort of trapped underneath. You suspect it might have been the uh, the daughter in law's body, but it's relatively considering the damage to the to the bodies themselves. This uh, this backpack seems relatively undamaged. I mean, it's pretty scorched. Um, you know, the buckles are, are, you know, the leather straps are sort of, some of them are burnt off, but uh, it does seem relatively intact. Okay, well, at this point, anything oh, that's yeah. on anything that's on any of them, I'm going mm -hmm. to loot it. Okay, you can take a look. Give me a, a give me perception. 15 all right yeah so yeah you get you get a look at that um thing the one dude the, who you are identifying like as the son uh had a dagger on him that was in a in a sheath the sheath is ruined the dagger if it was um if it was re if the handle was rewrapped would be serviceable it doesn't seem to be damaged although it's it's tarnished from the heat um so it's usable i guess it would probably could stand some repairs um you do find on uh, on Durval, the dead guy, he actually had a, you know, when you roll him over and sort of look at him, um, he had a small sort of pack, like belt around his waist um, that, um, that has another dagger on it. And there was like a little leather case in which you can see that there were probably some scrolls. They are destroyed now, though. Okay. Uh, but the case is there underneath the woman, the daughter-in-law, uh, you do find that backpack. And as you open it up, uh, you can see what looks to be what you would consider to be hastily thrown together, a es escape bag, like a go bag. Right. So mm -hmm. you can see there's a couple of daggers sort of in the bottom and they seem to be relatively intact. Um, you can see uh, a length of chain with spikes on it, about eight feet long, uh, which may or may not be some sort of weapon. Uh, and you also find a small metal case that has 40 gold pieces in it. The gold pieces are all sort of lined up in rows. It, this looks like uh, somebody's savings that they just threw into this thing at the last minute. You also see some cloths that have some like scorched bread. Uh, there's some uh, dried vegetables and dried meat in a in some you know wrapped in uh, wrapped in wax paper that's sort of damaged. A lot of it the heat has has ruined. But two daggers, a uh, uh, and a small iron box with forty gold pieces in it, okay. and and a, and a spiked chain. But that's all that you find that's of any value. Okay, so I've got those marked down. We'll deal with those later. At this point, we should probably just mount up and head on and continue on. Yep. Okay. We're burning time on our on our uh, SPF nine thousand. <laughs> all right. So you go a couple of more miles, and if anything, the environment. Yeah, I mean, you guys are kind of fried. I mean, the stuff that the elves gave you. I mean, you're less like this is good because you could feel the heat. You're not negatively affected on it but you could feel the heat all around you and it's like being in i mean you ever see those like youtube videos of people driving through the forest fires in california and oregon where it's like there's fire all around them and smoke and that kind of stuff uh and they're just sort of like trucking through that's what it's like the horses are going berserk and you can see that in some cases uh if you guys stray too close to the to the edges of the path of the elf road that they call it um the horses will uh, you know, whinny and and sort of skitter back, and you can see some of them have got little little streaks of blisters, small blisters that they may have gotten that uh, uh, you know that hurt them. You have to be very careful with them. You guys keep going, and you are sort of trucking along this road when you hear off to your right 
a sort of screeching noise. And flying out of the forest of the flames, you see a small creature come flying out, flapping around. It's about the size of maybe a raccoon. Uh, and it comes flying out of the, of the forest and flies directly to you guys. And, uh, y- and it's screeching and flapping and it yells out, help me, help me. That creature's coming to get me. You got to help me. And it says it in common. And you're like, what the what now? Sounds just like Yardley. <laughs> yeah, did you say it's a flying raccoon? Well, it's a flying creature. And here, why don't we just go ahead and change maps? Hey, look, something else wants to be sent to Phrasma. <laughs> All right, so you guys are uh, sort of out of bottom air, and you guys are moving. Uh, I left the horses out, so uh, uh, just so that. But you guys are sort of moving in this direction. Uh, if you could see that. And this creature over here comes flying out uh, from the north. Uh, it's screeching and yelling, it's after me, it's after me. And this creature looks like this. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So he comes screeching out of there and he, and, he, and he flies over to you guys and he comes right over here. He's like, help me, help me. It's after me, it's after me. Please help me. And he's like flying around you. Help me! It's What's coming after you. Ah, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a creature. It's coming to get me. You gotta help you? me. What's after you? Why would something be after a handsome bloke like you? <laughs> uh, he says, uh, 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 "My name is <laughs> Yardley." It's <laughs> not Yardley. Uh, I have it. My name is Dodge, and uh, he says, "My name is Dodge, and, and uh, the, the creature is chasing me. I got you. Got to get out of here." And about that time, you start to see something coming out of the flames, and you're not sure what it is, but it is pretty big, and it just kind of like, foof, 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 and it's flying out right towards you guys, and it looks like this. A bat that's on fire. And it is flying directly to you guys. And you can see its eyes widen uh, as it flies towards you. And then you can see it sort of its head lowers down and it begins flying faster as it sees you guys there. And I think at that point we roll for initiative as as Dodge is like, help me, there it is, and runs around behind you. Hmm. Yes. Roll for initiative. All right, here we go. All right, my finish it, finish it. That little creature looked like a fey creature, thus. Uh, I, that's a great question. I am not a hundred percent sure, so let me check. Looks more like a demon. Why is why not showing? Up? I was thinking method. Yeah, method. That too. Nineteen. They're more like an elemental. Hold on, man. I got your email. Thank you. I sent your request. <laughs> I did leave you one last message, but <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you as, D, as a GM. So okay, it's not Fey, uh, at least to your eye. It's not Fey. It might be a method. It might be some sort of creature. It gives it gives off outsider vibes. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I have to do this. Okay, initiative plus two. Let me roll a niche for my guy. Hey, Les. Yep. I, I really uh, hate the fact that every fifth Friday goes to this B team that I'm not allowed in. So yeah, I think you should let me roll for the bad guys so I can murder these people. <laughs> that brings back bad memories. <laughs> That's probably not going to go well for Gatto, but give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing I hear Chuck say is murder people, kill things. I'm like, this is a different character. <laughs> yes, it's a different character. It's, it's a different character. Oddly enough, this character is probably closer to Gatto. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a look. Why is mine not registering? I don't know. What did you roll? I rolled a 19.03. 19.03. All right, let's get you in there. 
Uh, it says you wanted to send the result of this roll to the turn tracker, but no valid. You didn't. Uh, oh, you got to click character. You got to click on your character oh, to send it. Okay. Gordon's coming from my chair. Isn't it uh, unlawful to touch yourself? Well, it's not thing. unlawful. Not yet. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. So you see this bat come flying out of the forest. It's chasing after this other creature, which may or may not be a method. Uh, the method is screaming, help me, help me. It's coming to get me. You guys have to have to save me. And um, it uh, 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 and, and the bat may be changing targets because it, now it's it's less interested in, in the littler creature and now seems to be very interested in you. However, oh, no, you have the jump. So what are you doing? I'm assuming you guys have dismounted your horses at this point unless you tell me different how far away are we from it are we truly like where we are on the map or yeah we... yeah this there this area is like horses? the elf road and then this is the, the edges of it got it okay um i see a bunch of flaming trees i i see a um some kind of fire bat or fire bird mm -hmm. um winging its way toward me um i probably cannot run up and punch it at this time uh you can oh, maybe well my movement speed is 40. okay um my role is not the uh first strike um you can delay maybe. if you want uh, <laughs> you know um um Or missile weapon of some sort, maybe. You know, I, I, I am gonna um, advance. Okay. And um, I will attempt to parley with the angry um, flying fire bat. I'm okay. Gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go one, gonna well. two, three, four, five, six, and, and I will say, <clears throat> Mr. Bat, <laughs> Mr. bat. <laughs> calm down. Um, we we are friends. We are, we are here to help. And um, would would you like a um, fire bat treat? An ice cream cone. <laughs> you don't. So you don't get the impression that the bat maybe understands you, but it definitely sees you, and now it's swooping down towards you. Bring it on! <laughs> All right. So that's so that's you. You got an, uh, another movement if you want to do that. Yeah. Sure. All right. One, two, movement. three, four. Bring it on. Okay, so you're Double, so you just running game. right up to this bat, and it is it is like swooping down at you, uh, having changed targets. Vondrum, what about you? Now I put the horses in here for you guys, just in case you you were Wanna like get on the horse and take a ride, or well, if you, you know, whether you were mounted or not. I'm trying to figure out so, how I got to twenty two, and I'm still third. Uh, you have a very fast group of friends. I know you. So um, I was gonna shoot at this bat, uh, but now Ho is possibly in the in the way. Ono's in the way. Is the bat higher than Ono, or am I? Yeah, not? it is right now, but it's swooping down at him. So if I was to shoot a uh, scorching ray at it, okay, which would actually be a ray of ice because I chose ice as my element for the day. Okay, good choice. So I can um, move Ovani up to here, I believe, yeah. Okay. And, oops, I got to go one more. I got to move 15 feet. Okay, so I'm going to move to here. Okay. Scorching Ray, and that's a touch range attack, correct? Correct. Yes. And we need a five to hit. <laughs> we roll 20 jeez louise 24 yeah that's a hit all right so hey, Les, on your recorded uh thing you're not showing the speech and stuff do you know that or yeah I know. Rolls? okay okay so that's um yeah it was show also show um oh the gm stuff yep gm okay. messages yeah yep. so so i just leave it out people just have to give viewers are my our uh our three viewers will have to guess at what those rules might be. <laughs> you know, I'm one of them. I don't have to guess. <laughs> uh, 15 points of ice damage. Okay. 
Uh, so it hits him and it lets out. So the bat lets out a squawk. And so it's an ice ray. So it's just like a, a ray of like coldness that, that, that brings, I don't know, whatever moisture's in the air and sort of creates an ice bolt out of it. Sure. Cool. All right. Okay. Well, it hits the, the creature and it sort of like, you know, and, uh, it, you know, I guess bats don't make a lot of noise, but it does, it does set up a, a vigorous clicking, uh, in anger that it that it does. All right, that's it for you, Vondrum. That's it for me. Arendar. This thing is swooping down, so is it higher than 10 feet right now? It was about 15 feet in the air, but it's swooping down. Uh, I think, I don't know that it's higher than 10 feet. It's swooping down onto uh, Ono still. But it is, it is higher than, feet, yeah, it's probably, I can hit it. yeah, I think at 10 feet you could hit it. So if I think I can hit it, then I'm charging. Okay. So, yeah, essentially you're gonna have to like go into the air and try and get it. Can oh, yeah. you move that far? I guess you probably can. It's a double move for a charge. Right. So do that and then uh twenty-three to hit. That is a hit. So yeah, as the ice bolt hits it, you run forward to take advantage of that and you're just like Boom! And uh, you have to reach pretty high up, but you do nail it for 14 points of damage. And it is not sideways. It's flapping away and uh, trying to right itself uh, on this unprecedented assault. Titus, what do you do? Uh, I guess I will go with Magic missile. Eight points. Uh, magic missile, eight points. All right, boom. It gets, it slams into the creature. Uh, and uh, because uh, magic missiles can't miss, it doesn't quite kill it, though. It is slammed back and it is, uh, you know, its, it's wings are damaged. And uh, it, it begins to fall. It's fallen down to about six foot, six feet in the air, uh, and it's desperately trying to maintain its, uh, um, you know, its elevation. But it can't. It's, it's it, because of the the damage it's done to it. It's really hurt. Do you want to uh, move or anything? Or are you gonna stay right there? I guess I'll move a little bit. Uh... Do I recognize what this thing is? Mm, do you have uh, knowledge nature or knowledge arcana? Uh, yes. Let me roll for that. Somewhere. Here we go. Oh, for crying out loud. Yeah, you're not sure what this is. You've never seen a flaming giant bat before. Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> only only in the picture shows down at Cabal's. But um, yeah, no, you're not sure what this could be. It is a big flaming bat. Local zoo probably has one. All right. Dodge runs around and uh, uh, perches on, uh, I believe this is Arendar's horse's seat and it just like he sits on the saddle and he's like and he says to Wraith thank god you guys came along I, I was in real danger with that that bat you gotta you gotta be careful out here in the fire force there's so many things not going on I really I'm really glad that you guys came it's your turn Wraith do I know what the hell that thing is now the problem is who does Wraith shoot <laughs> give me a knowledge I mean a knowledge arcana or knowledge nature or something like that to try and figure out this guy. Keep trying. Uh, you got none of those. Do you, what, so what knowledge skills do you have? Local. Knowledge <laughs> local. He's definitely. So I can't give you that. He's de whatever this thing is. He's definitely not local. But at this point, you live at least, around here. At this point, at least he has not been aggressive. No, if anything, the opposite. He was he, he was definite. I mean, all this has happened in this in the space of about fifteen seconds. Uh, but um, he basically came flying out of the out of the fire forest. He's like, "Help me! Help me! Help me!" Uh, and the bat was out on his heels. And your guessing is the bat was trying to catch and eat him. 
Uh, then this guy, Miracle of Miracles, found you guys and sort of like went around. He's like, you guys can help me, save me, you know, that kind of thing. And he just kind of like flew directly over to you to, it, it, as a sort of desperate attempt to avoid being eaten. Okay. Well, I don't know what it is. It's running from this thing and everybody's attacking it. So I'm going to move here. Okay. And take one shot at the, the, the uh, bat. Okay. 24. Uh, 24 is hit. So yeah, that will. So the bat, the arrow takes the bat right in sort of a midships there. Shunk, uh, and it falls down to the ground with a splat. And uh, immediately the fire that it was covering it when it came out sort of steps up. And suddenly you have the bat when it falls, the fire sort of takes over and it's burning merrily. Uh, the fire is sort of much bigger than what it's when it was on the bat. But yeah, he fall he falls to the ground, and the guy's like, uh, the other guy's like, "Yay! I know you guys would do it. Thank you so much. Thank you for helping me. Uh, my name's Dodge. If I didn't tell you before, and I, I really appreciate." It. He starts to fly our, you know, he's kind of flying over by Ray. Thank you, thank you, sir. Are you an elf? I have a second arrow. <laughs> 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 you may not want to fly over by me. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> where did that arrow come from um <laughs> yes where did that arrow come from <laughs> that's normally what people ask when wraiths around <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh we're, we're there's no there's no poe you you could see that uh uh the, the creature is down uh but this other creature is sort of flying around he seems to be flying around wraith right now and wraith is sort of st- scowling at him so it's going to come over by it's going to fly over by uh titus he's like are you an elf thank you for helping me that bat was going to eat me i could i know that you guys i knew that you guys would help me i knew that you guys would uh would 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 help me with all this who are you what are you and where do you come from ah my name is dodge i come from the elemental planes of fire i was brought here by the power of indomitable of who indomitable I don't know what he is. He's the he's the creature that's making all of this uh, all of this fire ten times worse. Oh well, can you help us uh, send him away? Oh, I don't know that I could do that. I, I've only I've only talked to him a couple of times, and but uh, but he's controlling a lot of the fire in the forest right now. Uh, I don't know what happened with him. Oh, he's very powerful. Uh, sometimes he looks like a like a giant beetle. And sometimes he looks like three f- stags with flaming horns. And sometimes he looks like a big eye made out of fire. He is super powerful. He controls the fire forest. Oh. Hey, Les, I'm going to roll a knowledge planes. Do I know anything of what this creature talks about? You know everything. Uh, <laughs> so six, six foot eight, size 12 shoe. <laughs> you're not you're not sure. But something, I mean, the, the, the description that, that this creature is giving you uh, is, is not sufficient enough for you to get an idea of it. But the, but the creature that, he descri- that he's kind of describing that has different forms and controls the fire forest, you're thinking that it might be some sort of outsider presence or some sort of fire creature, maybe, maybe an afrit of some kind. I, you don't know. You, although you can't re- you can't recall anything of Ifrit's having shape change ability, but that doesn't mean that they don't. I'm going to ask Dodge why he, he was brought here. What was why, why did he uh, this guy indomitable feel like you needed to join the party? I don't know. I, I you know I don't think he meant to bring me here. I think it was just sort of an accident. You know the, the the you know you know how it is. The door opens, you go through it, and then you find yourself somewhere in the middle of a fire forest on the prime material plane. Sure. I'm going to ask him if he can help us as, find As him. happens. Well, he is every... Are you talking about Indomitable? You want to find Indomitable? I yes, would stay yes. away from him. He he can be very, uh, very dangerous. He's a powerful creature. I, I tried to stay clear from him. Erendir and Ono, give me a per- quick perception check. Perception. I don't know that you guys should find him. You know, you guys were great to help me, and I, I really appreciate it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in your debt, and if, and if you want, I'll, I'll come around with you, and, and, uh, and I'll, you know, I'll tell you some of the things about that I know uh, about about stuff. But uh, I, I don't know that you should go look for looking for Indomitable. He, he's Actually, he's powerful. He's for Indomitable, so we have to. What find do him. I think he's up to? Well, so you guys are listening to this guy talk to Titus and Vondrum, and he's obviously very excited. Uh, he just 
managed to escape what probably was going to be certain death. But as you guys are sort of listening to this, you look back at the bat creature and the fire has sort of burned down and you see that the bat's wounds, the the, the damage to his wings, the damage to the arrow hole. Uh, you see the arrow itself is completely burned up, uh, the one that Wraith shot. But you can see that the hole is sort of heal, healed up and you can see his, his wings sort of go and start to move. Are, are you going to run over and punch? I'm immediately bat. stabbing that thing. You're going to reach down and stab? Go ahead and try. Because as you begin to raise your falcata and, ra- and, and clench your fist for, or uh, clench your foot for a, for a boot to the head, uh, I guess you don't really clench a foot. That's kind of how that works, but um, you see this, the its its head kind of pop up, and uh, it makes that clicking noise that bats make as it's looking at you, Arandar, and it may try to bite you. Although a twenty-four hits it for eight more points of damage, uh, which does seem to slash it back again uh, into into a, a piece. I'm going to call out and say, um, "I don't know if it can be killed." The fire that you saw before sort of grows up again and begins and begins flaming up again. Try pouring water on it. Wow. Be on so it. the bat regenerate. Maybe, maybe we need to move it away say, from the fire. I'm going to call over to... Have I seen Poe make water before? <laughs> yeah, you guys have been camping for a while. <laughs> Yeah, he pees all the time. He pees all the time. <laughs> He's a I, I can't make. I don't have water. I can't make water. I can make a lot of water, but I got to use the spell slot to do it. What about just beheading him? That's probably a good one to have. Well, you just pretty much um, chopped him in half. In fire swamp. So tomorrow, yep. I'll throw that one on your list. Yep. Um. I don't know. I'm not. How much water I, do we bring with us? I can I can drench it. Um, I can Some. I mean, you probably have a couple of skins a piece, and then a couple of more skins of water attached to the attached to the uh, uh, the saddles of your horses. You would have. I mean, the idea of coming into the fire forest. Um, you guys would have probably loaded up as many water skins as possible before leaving Hadid's, uh, Hadad's farm. What I'm thinking, as big as this thing is. This is like five gallon bucket of water to make any kind of difference here, right? This isn't like, okay, I'll empty a water skin and that should make a difference, right? Uh, you're not sure a water screen would do much good. I memorized drench. I'm looking it up to see how much water it is. It's a can trip. I mean, it's not that big of a deal to use it, I guess. Okay. Whoever that is sudden- close to, that would be Titus. I'm going to call it Titus. Find out if your friend knows how to permanently kill one of these things. Yeah. Hey there, Dodge. Uh, what is that beast? And you have any suggestions for uh, permanently offing him? I, it's just some bat, as far as I know. I, 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 I don't. I, I, I was running away. I don't. I don't know how to. I, I don't know how to unpermanently dead kill him. Well, what sort of attacks do you have? What kind of magic? I don't. I don't have any magic. I'm just a. I'm just a, a fire creature from the plane of fire. I don't. I don't. Well, uh, can you take his fire? Don't you need to feed on something? Well, uh, I don't. I don't eat fire. I sometimes use it, and I can breathe on him. But I don't know that my breath will 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 hurt him. I mean, I breathe fire. Okay. I'm a fire creature. Of course you are, and you're a mighty good one. Thanks. Okay. I'll just. Uh, I'll drench it. It doesn't okay. really give me an amount. It just says that it's uh, quench small fires, can instantly quench a natural fire that's five feet or less in diameter. Freezing cold downpour deals one point non lethal damage. Okay. That's it. All right. So you're going to. Creature up to size large. Yeah. So I should be able to drench it pretty good. Okay. So you. Um... So as so as Vondram, as you are sort of walking up to cast the cantrip on here, you see. You can see Ono and Arandar, and you guys are looking at the fire, and the fire is burning back down again. And you can see that the two pieces that you cut in half with the falcata are connected back together again. That's not moving, but they are connected back together again. But it's sort of like that fire is sort of dying down again. 
Vondram, oh. you put a bunch of water on it. If we put the well, I, I'm going to pause for a second then, because if we put the water on it, we're just going to make the fire die down. Put the water on it, I mean, and I'm going to start dismembering this thing. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead then. We'll see what happens. Let's see what happens when we drench it before you dismember it, though. Sploosh. All right, you you put water on it, and it raises a huge cloud of steam. And as far as you can tell, uh, it does put the fire on the bat completely out. Uh, you look down at the at the bat's uh, body, and it is joined back together. But you can see that some of the other wounds are are only partially healed, uh, and it it does seem to have like one eye open. And you can hear it like clicking a little bit. So maybe it is back a little bit. Uh, but the fire is out, and it seems to be, if anything, that that hurt it very badly. Oh, okay. I'm gonna basically, like this. yeah, I'm gonna go for the wings, like the base where it connects to the body, and just hack that through until that one wing's off, then the other wing's off. I'm just gonna start just dismembering it, chop it up into pieces. All right, takes yeah. a minute, but yeah, you're able to chop it into the pieces. One thing you know, as you chop it up, and pretty quickly, once the first chop, the first couple of wings, once you take the wings off, uh, its eye closes and and it stops clicking. Um, and then once you chop it into other pieces, the fire that surrounded it from before doesn't come back after the drenching. And so, uh, those pieces, you, you stay there for a couple of minutes watching it and they do not seem to read it. But Dodge is talking with Titus and he's like, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a creature of the fire plane. So I can do, I can't breathe on stuff. And sometimes fire will come out of my uh, mouth. And I, I, you know, I, I, you know, I love to be around metal because I can heat it up, uh, which is kind of fun. Sometimes I like to see people, uh, you know, that are wearing, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, armor, uh, you know, soldiers and stuff. I do, I do like to <laughs> give them a bit of a, a hot foot in their, uh, in their armor. That's fun. That sounds like fun. We should try that sometime. I think that would be great. I do too. I walk over in my breastplate armor and say, "Don't get any ideas." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I promise you helped me. You you saved me from the from the uh uh, uh from the from that bat. I you know I, I would never I would never do that to you guys. What are what are you doing in the fire forest? Do you really have a gift for indomitable? Yes. yes sure. Yeah. It's a big jug of water. <laughs> oh, I. Don't think he'll like that. He's a <laughs> he's a fire guy. Well, you know, fire likes heating things like water, so you can make tea. What's tea? Tea. Don't worry about it. It's a beverage. Oh, a beverage. I've heard of that. That's a that's a uh, prime material plane thing, isn't it? It is prime. But we think all the fire creatures well, are going to be doing this sometime. It's 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 a thing now. So. Well, I'd like to come with you guys if that's okay. Sure, it's okay. You get the impression that he definitely wants to come with you guys to stay safe from uh, uh, any other dire bats that are out here <laughs> flying around looking to eat these guys. Um, but yeah, you, you're uh, so Titus. You've um, well, you definitely to... get outsider vibes from these. Probably a method. You don't get uh, you don't get a demon vibe off of this creature, despite its despite its appearance, <laughs> which is relatively ugly. Um, you don't you don't get a demonic vibe. It's not a it's not an imp or a closet or anything like that. How about a knowledge arcana? Will that tell us exactly what it is? Might. How about a seventeen? Your guess is method too. I mean, you and Titus talk a little bit about it. your guess is this is a fire method. He talks about coming from the plane of fire, which is where fire methods come from. Um, he talks about how the door opened and he flew through and found himself here. Now you're not sure what that means if he was summoned or. Or like, there's disruptions in the in the arcanosphere that are causing you know uh, short-term gates to open up of the elemental planes or anything like that. Because if that's the case, if there are if there are some sort of if there are short-term gates opening up the elemental plane of fire, that might explain why the fire forest is so active right now. Because even yeah. the elves said that this is this is the the burniest it's been for a long time. So Vondram's going to point a finger at him and tell him, you can stick around as long as you're help to us. If you become a hindrance to us, you're dust. Can I have a horse? No, no horse. Not to eat. Uh, okay, well, if, if there's something I can do to help, I, I, I owe you my life. Uh, so uh, I'm, here, I'm here to help you in any way I can. Well, just hang out with uh, us. Unless, unless I can get out of it. And behave yourself. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we should be <clears> on it. <throat> Ask it if it knows where the Lyceum is. 
Uh, the Lyceum, Dodge. Do you know? The Lyceum? I don't know what that is. Is that a is that a human town? Yes. Oh, let's go there. Oh, it's an elf town. Oh, I like elves too. Well, I'm sure they'd like you. Are you a human or an elf? I've heard of both. I am neither. Oh, well, I haven't heard of that. What's a neither? <laughs> it's it's <laughs> neither here nor there. Is it like a gnome? Well, no. Gnome. Gnome. <laughs> gnome not at all. <laughs> he seems curious, uh, talkative. You get the impression that there's a fair amount of adrenaline running through his body. Uh, and uh, he seems pretty harmless. I mean, all this talk about breath weapons and stuff like that and heating metal up when it gets close to it is a little bit concerning. But he has done nothing to indicate that he's at all planning to attack you guys if anything he definitely gives the impression that he's you know he feels like he's in your debt that you saved him so continue on yeah we'll continue on do we should we sense motive on dodge uh you could go ahead all right it's not really my strong suit 19 uh so as far as you could tell um, he definitely seems like a um, an excited little creature, right? So he's not. Uh, he, I mean, you're you're between you and Vondrum, you guys are sort of like doing some of you know our you know talking about like our our canon stuff, and you're like you're pretty sure this is a method. Methods are not. I mean, they can be dangerous. Um, some of them, uh, but generally speaking, they're not evil. Um, so in, in this case, I mean, it, you get the impression that it's not necessarily going to just flat out, like if it was chaotic, it's not going to just flat out attack you um, because it, it, it owes you guys, right? Um, but, uh, you know, they can be dangerous, but generally speaking, um, they're, not, they're not evil. And, in this, and this one seems to be on the up and up. Okay. I will adopt him. If he All right. behind the couch, we fill him full of holes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that uh, uh, that Flashheart is going to bring Yardley back to the to the prime material plane with him. I can't I can't imagine that he won't. That and his five thousand family members, right? Well, he said he he could. Uh, I mean, he, he, I mean, your guess is that he won't want to go anywhere without his family, but um, he you haven't seen any of his family yet. The, they'll all fit easily on the Skywheel. He does. He does take a lot of food and, and alcohol from when you guys when you guys are at the Worm Empire and you guys let him in, and you guys have the late suppers and you know the drinks and stuff like that. He steals a lot of that stuff and late it takes off. He, with he, it. That was probably half our hotel bill. It wasn't staying <laughs> there. It was the stuff he was taking. It was. It was all yardly. All right. So you guys uh, uh, um, get back on the path. Dodge settles into. He actually. Uh, uh, flies a little bit, but you can tell that he's kind of like tired. Titus, you can tell he was tired. And at one point, he sort of like latches onto your saddlebags, sort of off to the side, so that he can ride along with you while he rests. Your guess is that he was so excited that he sort of burned up a lot of his energy, and now he's now he's kind of looking for a nap. Um, and you guys continue on through the fire forest as you do. Uh, you give everybody give me a perception check. All right, Chuck 15, Aaron R 17, Vondi 20, Poe 19, Ono 15. Is that it? Is that everybody? One, two, yeah, it's everybody. Okay. Um, oh no, Titus, I need one from you. I got one. I think I rolled a uh, Titus, you're Ono. What? <laughs> what? Hey. I am not. T no, uh, I need I need a perception check, Titus. Damn it. Thirteen. Um, everybody else seems to be moving right along, but Vondrum, something, something <clears throat> is making you uneasy. You kind of look around and. <clears throat> You know, it's like you get this weird feeling that you're being watched and it, it occurs. You guys are, you know, you guys keep moving and you guys get a couple miles deeper into the fire forest. It's getting pretty, it, you know, a lot of stuff going on here. 
you know, all this fire. But it's it's almost but you get this feeling like inter and it's not constant. It's like intermittently you get this feeling like you're being watched. And in some cases, it's very strong. And it's almost you, you sort of like look around into the forest. And there are some times when you can feel like you almost see something out there and then it's gone. And you're Something's like, wrong with my perception check? That's not rolling right. What is it? Well, I should be getting a plus ten bonus. You are. You just rolled a three. <laughs> oh, when I roll it, it just shows the final number. Ah, okay. Yeah, you rolled a three plus ten is thirteen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Vondra, I don't know if it's something you want to share uh, with the rest of the class, but um, it's possible. You're muted. I'm going to share it with Poe. Okay. First off, I'm going to settle up to Poe and see if Lorelai can maybe, uh, you know, range above us or in front of us or try and catch. I'm just going to kind of share the perception. Okay. Poe, any reaction to that? I mean, Vondrum thinks that, uh, you know, that maybe you guys are being watched by something. And it's intermittent. It's not like all the time, but every once in a while, he gets a really kind of odd feeling. Yeah, Poe's going to tell Lorelai to go look around and see if she sees anything going on. Okay, what does she do? Does she fly up into the air or like into the fire, into the forest? Or is she? No, uh, yeah. Could she be damaged by fire? Well, she I would wish. have had, to, she would have to have one of the young ones to okay. protect her. Yeah, she's not protected by fire normally. Okay. All but right. Yeah, she, would, she wouldn't go up high. No, she would try to uh, use stealth. I can give you a stealth roll here. Uh, yeah, please. He is very good at it. Woo! That is really good. Okay, so 31 stealth roll. Give me a Lorelei perception roll. Uh, pretty good at that, too. Uh, that's pretty good, too. All right, so she kind of flies around. You guys keep moving on, and she's going to, like, kind of hangs back a little bit. And uh, after a couple minutes, she comes flying back to you like uh, um, like like her ass is on fire. And uh, she comes back and Poe, she tells you that she saw a creature kneeling down in the in the flames in the fire forest, watching you guys as she passed as it passed. I think she just des could... she described it as about the size of a human with a lot of teeth and a long beard that looked like it was made out of metal. And he had a big, uh, um, and a big, he had a big like spear, but she says it wasn't a spear. It's not your, not like your spear. It was some other, but it was like that. He had a big weapon in his hand uh, that was, had teeth on it, like a saw. Mm. And he was squatting down or, 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 and watching as you guys passed. And then when you guys had passed out of vision, he disappeared in an explosion of fire. And it, it was just like a pop of fire. And then it appeared back again later. She only saw him this one time. And he was sort of like off to the side of the path. Any, any of that ring a bell to Poe what, what it could be? Knowledge, I mean, knowledge arcana, knowledge religion, something like that, maybe? Vondram's going to try arcana, too. That's Vondram's arcana. Okay. Uh, Poe, was that 12? Is there, what is that? Yeah, that was the knowledge arcana. Okay, yeah. Tw uh, you don't, you can't think of anything that, that meets that description. Vondram, you're not sure either, but the talk of the metal beard uh sort of it it uh it spurred a memory and you can remember years ago back at cabals uh you were in class and you were looking through some books about outsiders and and creatures of the of the lower planes and you remember seeing a painting or, or an image of a creature that had a long wiry beard that was made of some sort of metal and uh, you remember that the um, that the heading was called it was called a barbazoo. Um, you're not sure what kind of kind of creature that is, but it was a creature of the lower planes of some sort. 
I'm going to ask Poe if he thinks that we should give our secret away that we're on to him or just let the rest of our party know and continue on and have Lorelai keep an eye on it. See if he pops up again. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that we're really on to him. <laughs> we just saw him. So, well, I mean, that we're, we're on the fact that he's following and watching us. I mean, should we give it up and be more prepared and attack when we see him or should we just let him follow us and keep an eye on him? Uh, that's a question probably for Aaron Dar and Wraith, maybe. I, I'm not sure. I'd say we should include the rest of the party and see what they want to do. Well, I'll keep walking on casually and let you do that. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'm going to talk to the brothers and see what they think about what's going on. Let them know that Lorelei has found a creature that seems to be following us or watching us and tell them what it did. Tell them that it's not done anything to us yet, but it looks dangerous. Seems like a scout to me. Like, uh... what was the name? Van Vanderet? Barbetsu, as you remember it being written over there. Although it was in a language you didn't understand, so you're not sure what that meant. So do we need to change our order? Uh, if you want, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming you guys are continuing to sort of travel in a right to left uh, uh, degree. So if you guys want to switch it around a little bit, you can. Well, Does Dodge thinking. know anything about this, Les? Poe's going to talk uh, about Yeah, Dodge has never... Uh, never heard of such a creature. He's like, but you guys should stay away from it. It might be, it might be uh, uh, another one of the servants of Indomitable, of the, of the, uh, of the, of the, of Indomitable, or, or something else that lives in the fire forest. There's all kinds of creatures here that are dangerous. They're just flat out dangerous. <laughs> you should stay away from them. Why do you want to stay away from everything? Because I want to stay away from everything. <laughs> I want to get to this Lyceum place because I, I, I think there'll probably be like elves and, and, and mages. There'll be mages there and they could send me back to my, uh, to my home. That would be great. And if you guys are going there, then I want to go there. So what I'm thinking is maybe I move a little further ahead to scout and have Arendar drop into the back in case whatever it is decides to come at us from behind. Okay, and I can send out Lorelai to keep doing the same thing she did. Yeah, and Lorelai can scout and let us know kind of ahead of time. Okay. All right, so you guys, uh, Lorelai is scouting, and then um, how far ahead are you going, Ray? I think probably only maybe 30, 40 yards, just enough that if I see something, I can stop them before they run into it. Okay. Okay. As far as you could tell, you get out there and you guys continue on a little ways. Uh, Wraith out front about 30 or 40 yards away, well within sight. Um, and Wraith, I mean, frankly, to your eyes, the road looks, um, you know, uh, uh, the same. You guys could just keep going deeper into this, uh, down this elf road through this thing. And you're just like, are we ever going to get out of it? Give me, Wraith, give me a perception check. <laughs> 24. 24. All right. So as you're passing by and everybody's sort of behind you, uh, you look over to the right and you see something coming out of the flames. Oh, shit. And it's just walking out of the flames towards you. Okay. Well, I'm going to pull up and put the hand signal up for them to stop. Okay. It walks out of the flames onto the edge of the of the of the elf road and it looks like this. Oh goody. A dog on fire. Ah shit. But it also has what looks to be a large femur bone, human sized, in its mouth. Which it kind of so it stops a little ways away and it watches you and it just sort of sits back on it haunches and it has and it has this bone in its mouth and it just looked like it's watching do you so do anything it wants to play fetch <laughs> well i was assuming you stop and everybody else is sort of like coming up behind you like joining oh, you no, kind of thing? i had had them stop or i would have okay. put up the hand signal for them to stop okay so now that i've got eyes on this thing I'm going to call them forward and have them sort of pass behind me while I keep an eye on it. Okay. And sort of move. And then 
once we see what this thing does, then I'll move back ahead and, and scout from the front. So I so, want them. So sort of like this kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know what kind of animal this is, and I don't have knowledge anything. I'm just a poor boy from a poor family. He's just a poor boy. Sorry. Um, but it, generally animals, if you stare them down, if they're predators, they, they don't necessarily attack because you're looking at them. That's not how most of them work. So that's basically his thought on this. He's going to look okay. at the group, pass behind him, and then fall back in unless this thing does something. Well, as you're, so you're, you're probably 20, 25 feet away and it's just sitting there on its haunches, like a, like a dog with a bone, frankly, at which point it looks at you and it essentially, it just, and it just, uh, drops the bone onto the ground. Hold on a second. I got to check something. And he drops the bone onto the ground and sort of looks at you, uh, kind of like, you know, here kind of thing, uh, that sort of thing. And he sort of like looks, you know, he sort of bobs his head at the bone. Okay. Okay, wait. Um, I, I've got animal handling. <laughs> okay. A fl- so it resembles a thin sort of lanky wolf. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got like reddish brown fur. The claws are white. And uh, uh, it's uh, got uh, its eyes are like made of fire. So they're sort of like burning. And then there's fire sort of on its fur. All yeah. over the place. Oh, and by the way, it's on fire. <laughs> yeah, it's on fire. But it drops that bone there and it sits there and it's sort of, it's looking at you, Wraith, and it sort of like bobs its head at the at the bone. Big boy. Good dog. Big boy. All right. All right. Hey, um, bring it here. Bring it here. Bring it here. It kind of looks over at you and sort of like does that thing that dogs do when you crinkle aluminum foil around them where they go. Mm-hmm. 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 It kind of lo- looks like here. He does not. He does not. Uh, he does not come to you. He stays Actually, right where he is. Love dogs. All right. Love dogs. Love horses. This is a pretty mean looking dog and it's on fire. Oh, sweet. Oh, big boy. He, 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 <laughs> huggy wuggy. All right. I don't know. He kind of so he so it, after after a few seconds, he picks up the bone again and takes five steps, uh, you know, a couple of steps forward, sits back down, and drops the bone again. Right. Um, this is a big bone. You, you're thinking it is a human femur. It's probably two feet long, um, and it's just laying there. And it's he's you know he sort of bobs his head against at the uh, at the thing again. Is the group okay. passing behind me now? Yeah. How how many people are behind me? How many people are further down the road? Uh, I don't know. Is uh, so Ono has sort of dismounted and come up by you. What about the, what are the rest of you guys doing? Are you guys moving behind Wraith? Hello. Quiz. Yep. Cricket. Cricket. Yes. Until he tells us differently, I'll follow his instruction. Yeah, I'm, okay. gonna, I'm, I'm gonna try to wave them behind me. Keep going. Okay. So does anybody besides Ono not keep going? Dodge, any idea what that uh, doggy is? I don't know, but he doesn't look uh he doesn't look that friendly to me. Can we please stop asking Dodge questions? <laughs> Why? What's the matter? We we know he's useless. He's, he doesn't uh, know. We're a duo. <laughs> One of us is the straight guy. We just hadn't figured out which. Dodge is the most useless thing on this map. He's not. <laughs> Last time I roll a knowledge arcana again, see if I get lucky with what that is. 23. Okay. That's you're pretty sure that's a hellhound. That's what I thought. I'm gonna tell that to Ray. Keep an eye on that hellhound. Do I know what that is? And I'm gonna what do I know of hellhounds that might be helpful to him? Uh, with a 23, well, you know that they're uh, outsiders, so he doesn't belong here. Um, they also, like, uh, like Dodge, have something of a breath weapon. Uh, they, can, they can spew fire. Uh, they often work in packs, so it's a little weird that this one is sort of solo. Generally speaking, they don't carry bones, and they certainly, they certainly don't, don't sit on their haunches waiting in for people to pick up bones from them. So I'm just going to tell him generally this thing runs in packs and it does have a breath weapon. Why it's by itself and I'm wanting to communicate with you. I have no idea. 
Could be summoned. Maybe something's controlling it. No. If most of the party is behind me, yeah. And Arendar is close to me. Yeah. Because he's bringing up the rear. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a step forward, pick up the bone. Okay. And do the normal dog thing. Get it, boy, and throw it off <laughs> in that direction. I like it. All right. So he looks at you and sort of looks at the bone and looks at you, and you see him sort of like lope off uh, to go get the bone. He goes over, he picks it up. And then he comes back over here and sits back down again and drops the bone. And you can see he puts his face like right at it. And he's like pointing at the bone. A hellhound that wants to play. Well, this is interesting. I like it. It doesn't want to play. It wants to look at the bone. Give me a perception check. Yeah. Uh, that's possible too. I'll tell you, look at the bone. Ray think that bright. Look at the bones. Uh what? So, yeah, you can see that there is, with the 26, you can see that there are words on the bone. Oh, okay. Well, I'll pick it up again. Okay. And this time I'll, if I can, I'll read what's written on the bone. Uh, it is in common and reads thusly. Yes, please reads thusly because I don't have glasses and I can't see that for shit. <laughs> it says, leave the case, cooperate, and we might find an arrangement to spare your lives. Carry this with you if you wish to bargain. Huh. Wow. Okay. I mean, I'm lawful good, but I do, do not like being that 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 hmm. Well, you know, we can I'm pick up the bone. We'll find out who sent it to us and then beat the crap out of them. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, I want to yeah. talk to whoever did this because now that now that I have the bone, <laughs> I'm gonna look back at, at Ono and tell him to go get back on his horse. The once you pick up the bone and it, it's obvious that you have read the words on it, the hellhound stands up, turns around, and heads back into the forest. Okay. So he takes off and pretty much uh, at some at one point wow. slips slips into the fire and disappears from sight. Wow. Okay. Wow. Leave the case. What are... The information that we have, the the stuff that we've been fighting for since day one. We're supposed to just give it up now. So well, if we leave the case, then we're supposed to carry the bone and be willing to bargain, or well, carry the it's... case and then keep the bone means maybe we're not going to leave it, but we'll bargain. It says, leave the case, cooperate, and we might find an arrangement to spare your lives. Carry this with you if you wish to bargain. What yeah, case? let's carry it with us. We're not leaving the case, so. Wait, not like a case, like a mystery, but a... No, a case like, the, I guess, the stuff, the stuff that we, we've like we're trying to get from the license. Case, the case full of documents uh, that right. you guys spirited out of Gate Pass. No, no, no. We're not leaving that, but yeah, no. we leave the uh, case of the Hound of the Baskervilles. Or something <laughs> yeah, like I'm that. curious. I'm definitely want to negotiate with whoever is threatening my life so I can kill them. Yeah, with the <laughs> in a very diplomatic way. <laughs> what happens if we leave the bone and keep the case and just keep walking? No, I want to keep the bone because I want them to try and negotiate with us. I want someone to come out to talk to us. Agreed. Figures. And I'm guessing if we leave the bone, that means they're we're not willing to negotiate, then it'll just be an attack of some sort. Right. We're willing to negotiate. It's the whole point. Yeah, I want some answers before I murder these people. <laughs> so I'm going to try to convince Ono to go get back on the on his horse and keep going. Careful. We're pretty smug for fourth fourth round fourth dimension fourth grade fourth level the fourth grade is probably more apt That's probably, <laughs> probably closer to our maturity level all right so the dog has gone back into the fire force and or the hellhound it's basically gone gone away and uh you guys have the bone and you so are we, so you guys just gonna like carry on i just have to laugh no one yeah. the message. What the heck was going through the brain of that of that dog? So he puts the message out. He picks it up and throws it. Throws it in the bag. Hey, good boy. Um, so I'm going to get back on my horse and I'm going to okay. fall, in, fall in at the back of the line. All right. As you do, 
Everybody give me a perception check. Again? Yeah. Okay. Is that everybody? I think it is. Oh, everybody's very perceptive. Yeah, everybody's very perceptive. So you guys here, as you guys remount up and you begin moving back down the thing with the bone in your hand, um, you hear laughter. Whoa. <laughs> Get him! And suddenly a whole bunch of rocks come flying in at you from all different directions. Uh, I'm going to go random hits here uh, with... Uh, D8s. Um, uh, Titus is one. Vondram Poe is two, three. Uh, Lorelai is four. Arendar and Wraith are five and six. Ono is seven. And uh, uh, Dodge is eight. First rock. Three. That is Poe. 23 hit you? Yes, it does. Bonk. You get hit by a hot flat stone that just conks into your head from out of nowhere. Seven points of damage. Second one. Again, it's you. 18 hit you? Yep. Another four points of damage is another rock bashes into your rib cage. Really incredibly bad luck. Two times out of eight. Uh, five. That is... Arendar. 17 hit you? No. Bang! Pounds a rock bounces off your uh uh after your uh shield. Like shield yeah. Seven. That is oh no. Okay. Um my AC is 21. All right, 16. So you you hear the rock coming out of uh out of the air spinning by and uh you dodge out of the way. Uh, two more. Hold on a second. Three. It's it's uh, uh, Poe again. Boy, you're just getting. Oh man, you're getting pummeled by these guys. Another six points of damage for Poe, and then the last rock. Uh, that's Vondrum. That's me. Ten don't hit. Yeah, I think that's going to be a miss, isn't it? Yep. All right. Out of from behind hidden places, all over, uh, all near the um there the road you see guys come out of areas including popping out of the uh out of the fire they've got slings in their hands and they've just loaded rocks up and they're popping out to get a better shot hmm. let's let's roll for a niche all right jeez oh, jesus <clears throat> so i have to touch myself again <laughs> you don't have to, but uh, a lot of people. Click the button. Really low this time. All right. Um, initiative. Um, hang on, I'm trying here. Ah, uh, select me and swing. Initiative. Well. There it is. All right. Is everybody in one, two, three, four, five? Did a war horse go? Who yeah, wrote it? You can change mine. Well, I tried to click on me and it clicked on the war horse. I did okay. it again, but you can change mine to the one that's for the war horse because that was my original initiative. 1105? Uh, yeah. Okay, hold and on. And then take away the second one. Like a war horse with initiative. I always have. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. Uh, all right, Vondrum, you're first up. You just see, the first thing that you notice is like, out of the blue, all of a sudden these sling stones just come raining down on you guys. Poe's been hit a couple of times. He's he's reeling around in his saddle. Um, you see 
as as you sort of look around to see where the attacks are coming from, you see these halflings uh, off in the distance, and they are very much like the guys you saw. And they are swir- whirling slings again uh, from behind these low rocks and off to the thing, off to off to the front, uh, that kind of thing. Um, what do you do? Um, I wait to see if my teammate reads his secret message, his whispered message. And... I'm waiting. Mike Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mike. You're on mute, Mike. Okay. Hey, Les. Yes. It didn't throw me in there. Uh, what'd you roll? Uh, fifteen point oh four. Okay. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Did you get the super secret message that no one knows about? Can you respond to chat? I did not. Was it chat in uh, Zoom? In roll twenty. Um, hang on. Right. Um, I can. It's got pluses and minuses for me. Okay. Makes me more more offensive, less defensive. Okay, so I don't know. Already you... pretty offensive. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm I don't know. You could be more offensive. I'm already pretty offensive, so. I will run up to Ono, because I think this will purely be fun for the rest of the evening. Okay. (laughs) Actually, I don't need to run up to him at all. I will actually dodge between the horses and then shoot a spell of enlarge on Ono. Ooh, okay. On who? Moving. Jennifer, you're moving me around instead of you. I'm sorry. Um, Ah, wow. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Big monk. <laughs> you, can, you can hear the hobbits in front going, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Meet my little friend. Oh, no. Say hello to my little friend. All right. Uh, all right. So Vondrum runs behind the horses and then uh, enlarges Ono, who is now wow. along the lines of 12 feet tall. Wow. Whoa. Have fun with that. Uh, and it's your turn. What do you do with it? Okay, um, I, I, I'm gonna run forward one, okay. and I'm gonna kick kick th- this guy right here. All right, keep in mind that your movement rate stays pretty much the same. You're a little slower because you're larger. However, your damage amounts go up one size category, and you, and, reach. And you right. get reach and you get a strength bonus. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. an extra wow. plus one okay. of damage. An extra plus one of damage. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Well, Plus two um, to strength. I'm gonna hit that guy. I mean, if, if this guy is attacking me and my, my friends, I'm, I'm gonna um, hit him very hard. So here's my uh, and I'm. He yells out before you hit him. He's like, "No, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it." Whatever. The head. <laughs> Nineteen to hit. Let me check. That is a hit. Okay. You just boot him. Is yes. it a punch or a kick? A kick. A kick. Just boot him. And it was, well, he's a halfling, and you're now an enlarged person. So there's a potential so that he may get launched. <laughs> He'll go. He may get launched. I think I got to do a, I gotta do a reflex. Do the, do the damage. Five damage. Hey, Eric, you get a plus two on your strength, so that might change your damage. Oh, so, uh, um, yeah. Wow. Well, um, add one to your damage. What's that, Don? Uh, you muted. Add one, yes. I said it adds one to your damage. Yeah, adds one. one. Okay. Plus, it's a the weapon is increased by one size, so it does more damage too. His fist. Oh, your fist, yeah. I guess, doesn't. Well, uh, yeah. no, he gets bigger. It so... still gets bigger. Yeah. So he's roll a d8. So the uh, extra on a d8 is that a is that two d6 or a d10? I think it's two d6 is the next step up. I like d8. that. That's awesome. So, yeah. Go ahead and re-roll that damage. 2d6 plus extra one for your strength. Okay. Um, uh, nine, bang. I'm not sure. That, um, what happened there? Sure. Oh, um, my damage increased yeah, from 1d6 to 1d8. Ah, okay. So six is correct then. Okay, got it. Okay. So uh, I'm going to do a quick... Uh, reflex save to see what happens. 
uh, <laughs> a natural two. So yeah, so you catch this this hobbit uh, sort of amidships with your foot, and he launches into the air uh, and lands about ten feet back and is prone as you have kicked him back into the to the fire. The uh, rock falls out of his um, out of his sling, and this one starts to like. I'm going to get you for that. You, you don't hurt my friend. And it's their turn. So this one is going to sling at Arendar. 18? Nope. Right? Is that correct? That's correct. All right. This one is going to sling at Titus. Oh. 17 hit you, Titus? No. Okay. And then this one is going to stand up and... Uh, um, Gently weep at the uh, as he tries to get himself back in a condition from that kick to the uh, to his little hobbit nards. Uh, do I, 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 I do I get a second kick? Oh no, no, you move oh, forward once. Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, Arendar. Um, this guy here just slung a sling at you, and he's loading up for another shot. Okay. Okay. Get to there. And, uh, oh, did you just run up to him? He's like, uh, uh, uh. you going to chop him? Uh, 25 is a hit. 14 points of damage. He screams in pain as the Falcata comes down on him, leaving a, an ugly slash. That hurt. All right. Uh, that's it for you? Say knock that off of those rocks. <laughs> uh, Poe. Uh, I guess he's going to go for the one in front of him. So 10, 20, 30 gonna move forward 30 feet and then strike with his giant sticker okay yeah. wait and, uh can you reach that far do you get one do you have you to get, get one more go one more yeah. no i got i got reach but it's 10 feet. I, I forgot to say swift foot action i'm going to enlarge i'm sorry oh okay then you've got 15 foot yeah all right six is a miss all right, man, two enlarged creatures. That's crazy. Uh, these hobbits are uh, finding out what they got into. Wraith, what do you do? Well, I don't have to worry about polearm, right? With In what sense? We're shooting through a, 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 an allied square. Uh, well, he does. So he's enlarged, so he would provide cover. Uh, for I mean, if you're shooting this one, put a five foot step to your left. <clears throat> yeah, oh, but the, the five foot step means I don't get to shoot two arrows. That's what I'm trying to get. A, a, five foot step, you can still shoot. Yeah, you can still shoot you with a five foot step. Yeah. Oh, can you? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So five foot step this way. Yeah. Okay, and then rapid shot. Okay. Uh, twelve is a miss. Sixteen and uh, let me check. Sixteen is also a miss. Okay. Two arrows go off into the fire mm. forest. So you're just like nimble little minxes. Titus, what do you do? Uh, Dodge? Do you like eating hobbits? I've never ate one, but I guess I could try. I think you should try. What do you mean? Like, you want me to go bite them? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, these them. are the crazy fire, fire These are the crazy fire forest hobbits. I'm not getting anywhere near those guys. They're dangerous. Oh. oh, boy. Dodge, I'm going to have to send you away if you can't help us. Well, I don't think that's fair. Well, you're hiding behind me. I don't think that's fair. Well, but you're a great warrior, and I'm just a little method. All right, Dodge. I'm getting a little fed up. Either you're going to help or you're out of here. <laughs> well, I guess I could try something, I guess. I don't know. There you go. That's all I ask is that you try. Try, try, try. All right, I'll try. <laughs> okay. 
so I'm going to, how far do I have to be away to use a, <laughs> what, what, why are you rolling? It's my turn. Hey, you just convinced Dodge that he has to join the fight. He just was rolling initiative. Oh, okay then. Um, how close do I have to be to use a, um, Dang it, what's not a <laughs> dagger? What's my other... A... You mean like to stab somebody? You gotta kind of be right next to him. No, not stab. You silly Asaurus. Um, oh, well, so uh, so you do know that it's these two guys over here that are slinging at you. Where? Oh, okay, so... A... Your rock came from over here. And they've uh, got cover over there for... Crossbow. What's What's the range of a crossbow? Uh, it's, I mean, you're. I think you're close enough. All right, then I'm gonna crossbow. The little Oops, bastard. I almost moved you there. Hold on a second. Oh yeah, you're easily within crossbow range. Here's the problem, though. You've got, you've got, he's got cover, uh, and they're fighting from cover. So you're at minus four on a range shot. Okay. Well, let's see. So if I move up. To... to get around that cover, you'd have to move to about here. Whoops. About like here. All right. Or maybe even farther. Maybe like here to get a clear shot. Well, does that put what's that burning thing? That's a burning, that's a flaming tree. Is it going to hurt? Uh, no, you've got the engine on, so you're probably going to be fine unless you like jump into it. Okay. Then I'll crossbow the little bastard. Okay. Here we go. Uh, 12 is a miss. And your well, crossbow bolt goes off of the thing. Anyway. <laughs> they can't hit anything! Oh, I'll show you. Just wait. Uh, this one is going to do a five-foot step to get close to polearm. He, uh, as a part of his move action, he is going to... Uh, use so they have these these um slings, but they also have long daggers that they that they pull out. So he's got the sling in one hand, but he also pulls the long dagger, and that's what he uses to attack you with. Uh, ooh, okay, not as good, but as the sling, but still pretty good. So he tries to stab you in the knee. Fourteen. Nope. This one's slinging a Titus. No. Fourteen, also a miss. Yeah, that's a mess. Uh, this one is going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. He goes around the rock and slings at Arendar. 16, miss. But that rock just goes flying by. Uh, Dodge starts flying this way. So how fast does Dodge move? Hold on a second. Uh... Oh, not that good. Um, all right, so Dodge sort of flies over here. One, two, three, four, uh, five. And he's sort of like, he's sort of, and Titus, you could see him. He's kind of sticking close to you, but he's sort of trepidatiously flying over towards polearm. And you see him making sort of a noise. So you see, you watch, you look over and you see him flying over and he's doing this. So you've ever seen like a cat throw up, like right before they throw up, they do this kind of like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, He's doing that as he sort of meander flies over towards polearm, but that's all he's doing right now. Who is doing that? Dodge. Oh, poor little guy. Uh, and it's Vondrum's turn. <laughs> um, I want to try something anyway, just to see how it works. Okay. I want to. I want to cast create pit. Okay. Right. Um, here, a five foot, a five foot radius, and I want to see if that rock will fall in and potentially do some damage to our little Bob Goblin or our Hobbit or whatever our evil little Hobbit. All right, so you're creating a pit here. Is do I have that right? Like right here, or like? right here yeah okay 
All right, so create pit. So he's got to try and jump out of the way. So his reflex is plus five. And then doesn't that rock, don't we get to consider that giant boulder underneath it? That Potentially, window? yeah, it could fall in too. So if he falls in, uh, well, the rock, it's a rock. So it doesn't get a saving throw. So it will definitely fall in there. Um, he gets a saving throw, right, against your, uh, yeah. okay, what's he the DC on that? Gets, let's see, this is a zero plus 10 plus four, 14. Okay, it's uh, DC 14? Yep. Is that right? Yep. Ooh, Ooh Nanny yeah. 19, he makes it. So he jumps out of the way, and the rock falls in the pit with a clunk. Ah, what a waste of a spell. Okay. Good to know, though, that things can fall into the pit, too, I guess. I never yeah, absolutely. Honestly, All right. though, the rock would fall heavier than him, so he'd probably just land on top of it. Uh, uh, well, no, I mean, Galileo, uh, they would fall at the same time. So, I mean, he could easily get like pinned at the bottom underneath it or something like that, depending on where he was next to, he was next to the rock. So if the rock rolled into the pit, I mean, there might be, he could end up under it, but in this case, he jumps out of the way. Okay. Uh, do you want to move or anything? I will move here between these two horses. Okay. Sounds good. Oh, no. Actually, that's not true. That's I'm not. actually going to move right. up here. Wait. I'm sorry. I am actually going to move all the way up here. I'll oh, okay. I'll engage. So this this uh, hobbit has a long dagger, a long knife, like a poignard almost for them. Maybe I'll come uh, up here. Uh, and, she's, and she sees you coming towards her, and she's like, ah, you know, uh, that kind of thing. Oh, no, what are so you doing? Can sorry I move about and then set, um, Can I set my, I'm sorry, can I move and set my spear? Can uh, Sure, if you spear? want. Yeah. Okay, I will. I'm going to set my spear in case of a charge. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Carry on. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, just a note, just a note. It, it feels weird fighting hobbits. Okay. Um, um, <laughs> you just booted one halfway into the fire force. It just stood up and now it's mad. So it has pulled its knife uh, and it's coming. coming towards you. All right. All right. Um, 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 can I um, attack that guy? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You can. Wait, I, I'm gonna hit him twice. Okay, here it comes. Um, crane style strike. Um, uh, ooh, that would be a natty twonzo. That is a potential crit. Let me, I'm yes, gonna sir. go ahead and get the crit chart out just in case. All right, go ahead and confirm it. Coming up, and ooh, 19 AC 18 on these creatures. Ooh. That is a confirmed crit. What, uh, uh, what. Do you want do you want to do the damage or you want to do the chart, chart? please? Chart, please. Okay, here we go. Uh, ooh, okay. Bleeder. Target suffers max damage and 1d3 bleed. You punt, you kicked him so hard in the face that now his nose and mouth is bleeding uncontrollably. What is max damage? A hundred. <laughs> uh, um, um, it, it is um um one d eight plus two, so um ten. Uh, so ten, yeah, because you get the the plus three, so ten points of damage, and then one d three bleed. Do you want to go ahead and roll that? Just roll d six, and we'll cut it in half. D six. All right, C coming up. Uh, one d six. And yeah, yeah. Six. Ooh, three points of bleed. So another three, and the blood is just gushing out of this creature's face. Okay, um, that was my first uh, kick. Can I can I kick him uh, again? Uh, her, and yes. All right, here it comes. Here comes trouble. Um, nine. Uh, nine, that's gonna miss. Right. But massive damage from that thing, and, and it's bleeding out. Uh, so blood is pouring out of its head. It's going to pass out here in a minute. Uh, okay, so that's Ono. It is now these guys. This so uh, this guy is going to run forward at Ono. He will he will provoke because he's got to get close. He's got his long knife in his hand. So you get a free shot at that guy as he comes close to you. Okay. Ooh, and you know what, Poe? Actually, he's probably going to come over here to stat a Poe's way. He doesn't want to give Poe a free shot either. So, I would have got one on the other guy though. Last time I missed, I was in the other room. But... Uh, it was a five foot step. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. She's trying to to get underneath your spear. Is essentially that. 
yep. trying to get too close for you to use your spear. Uh, this guy is going to come up here and save you, but oh no, you will get a shot at him. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can, uh, yeah. So you get an attack of opportunity. Absolutely. But you don't get multiples. You just get one. If somebody else crosses over, you will get it. You don't, you don't, because of this, you don't get one per round only. You get multiple per round equal to your dex bonus. Okay. Um, here it comes. Um, let me find my, uh, hang on. And boom. Uh, 11's a miss. <laughs> But my 15 is also a miss. Uh, and then that guy, where is he? Uh, so he can see you. So he's going to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, he's going to go down there. And he's actually going to sling at the horse. 17, which I believe hits the, the lead horse which I believe is Titus's horse. Oh, yeah, I, armor class 11. So 17 hits for... Uh, where, is it, where is it? Where is it? Here we go. I don't even know it's my horse. It was the lead one. Well, that couldn't be my horse. <laughs> it's my somebody's horse. horse and, and it just got bonked! Uh, Arendar's turn. Arendar? Arendar? I was muted. Is he there? Maybe. Bueller? Bueller? Yeah, he just unmuted. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Right right um, when Les walked away. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't walk away. I'm just getting a brewski. Okay. Just um, having a, another brewski, Charlie. Five foot step up, and I'm going to uh, sweet little guy again. Okay. 26 is a hit. 14 points of damage. Uh, that is enough to kill him. He yells out, ah, this one got me and falls backward with a huge slash on his, uh, on his body. He says, uh, uh, and he is, uh, uh, scrambling to try and keep the blood and entrails in, but it's, he slowly pauses. And, uh, <coughs> Since I haven't used my other action yet, can I intimidate this guy? You try, sure. And I have to go back and see how we agreed we were going to do intimidate. <laughs> because <laughs> we changed it we're using the unchained right yeah it doesn't matter that was a thing well that was a one so all right you roll a one on intimidate so now you're intimidated <laughs> i'm intimidated in my intimidate skill <laughs> well you just angered it uh, is essentially that so this one stops looking at vondrum and and it was already coming around to you anyway so now it's like i'm gonna kill you you hurt my friend uh and so it is uh aggravated and your intimidation didn't do jack uh, but it's Poe's turn. Poe, what do you do? Yeah, back up. All right. Five foot step. Gotcha. And Lorelai is just basically surveilling to make sure if anybody gets hurt bad enough that Poe can heal him. Okay. And I am going to attack. And miss again. And miss again. Boy, you're not having a lot of luck tonight. Nope. All right, Wraith, what about you? I'm going to do a five foot step. Okay. And attack this one. Uh, okay. Arrows, you mean? Yeah. All right. Where'd that arrow come from? She's facing the wrong direction. 22's a hit. I don't think you get sneak attack on this. So just the nine? Yeah. Or do so you get nine, two? It's two arrows, right? It's two arrows. So I, right. I, I, there's a 22 to hit and a 17 to hit. 17 will miss, but the 22 hits, so that's so nine, nine points. points of damage. Ow, my ass! You, the arrow just <laughs> sprouts out of the back. She looks around at you. It's like, ah! Uh, all right, you moved, right? I took a five-foot step, yeah. Titus. Unless I misspoke, too, by the way. I didn't take a five-foot step. I'd moved back so that he would not, he would not be in my range. Right? So... Yeah, he's gonna have to. Uh, he's gonna have to move forward to get at you, right? Okay. But you only move five feet, right? Uh, no, I, I. That's what I'm saying. If I only move five feet, then he would have just be able to do a five foot to attack me. I should have. I have a fifteen foot reach, so I shouldn't have gotten that close the first time. Well, if you move more than five more feet, than that would have provoked. 
Well, no, because they they don't have reach. So I'm moving out of their. Yeah, I'm moving out of their. Uh, I haven't passed through a square. You haven't passed through. That's right. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah you're right. Yeah. But they would if they if they attack me or Ono this time. Well, they can attack Ono, but if they move, I'm threatening them, so I will get an attack of opportunity. Is all I'm trying to do. Right, unless it's a five foot step. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Titus. So does this tree provide me cover? Uh, depends. Uh, it might, but I don't think anybody's back there. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, okay. You know, um, that sounds reassuring. It's, <laughs> it's, which is your job? Well, the guy, the guy that you were that you were attacking, uh, sort of slipped behind that you shot the crossbow at, slipped behind the rock, and you can't see him anymore. Okay. Well, then I am going to take a magic missile at uh, this. Why is it not there? Okay. Okay. So. Go, unless he'd like to have a glitter dust party. <laughs> well, they're hobbits, so maybe. Uh, seven points. Okay, a, a solid hit, but not enough to kill her. Well, I just wanted to tickle her, and maybe she'd leave. She felt it, no question. But it's just—it's just making her angrier. Do you want to move or anything? Uh, yeah, I, I find it's good to hide behind big things, so I'll hide here behind Poe. All right, so you're going to squeeze in there between Wraith and Poe? Sure. All right, sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, it's their turn now. So this one, hold on a second. I got so many, so much shit going on here. Uh, this one is going to take a five foot step out to here and sling at... No. She's going to come out here around the other side of the rock and sling at polearm because uh, she can see that he's damaged already. She hit him once before, too. 19 hit you? Yep. Seven more points of damage as another rock bounces off of you. Kabonk. Uh, so she we does were in that. In the second grade, I'd say she likes you. So. <laughs> uh, this well, one. Like is going to take a five foot step and try to stab Ono uh, and miss. And then this one is going to yell out ah! and charge Arendar and try and stab him and miss. All right. Now it's Dodge's turn and he's making that sort of like weird pukey motion. But as he does so, he, uh, he emits a huge gout of fire he moves forward to here and blows fire onto the uh onto the this hobbit right here all right dodge all right so the hobbit gets a reflex save okay which was a 23. So only half plus. Okay. So hold on a sec. So it's this much damage plus damage reduction plus half. So. All right. The fire sort of licks around her and she laughs. Ah! <laughs> sort of creature are you? And tries to stab Ono again. <laughs> Bondrum, you're up. Uh, within 10 feet? Is that 5 feet or 10 feet? Would be, it's 5, isn't it? Uh, where were you? That's uh, Oh, you were right oh, there? I meant, I meant to get reach. Oh, that's 10 feet right there. Yeah, okay. If you so go, to go right there, there, you're flanking with me. And yeah. You. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Even, awesome. even right where she is now it would be flanking, too. Okay, sweet. Um, he I'm is. Take Sorry. My elven spear and pokey pokey. Okay. 
Ooh, Twonzo, that's going to hit. And I had my spear charged. Ooh, with what sort D6, of energy? 2d6 of cold energy. Ooh, okay. On top of my 1d8 plus one. So let's roll that first. There's that. She's still up. Ooh, That's max cool. damage. You get her right in the back. Ah! She yells out. Okay, and then 2d6 for cold damage. Four points of cold. So 13 total. Yep. She screams out an unearthly scream as she reaches around to try and remove the spear from her back. You can see the cold damage is sort of spreading around on her skin, uh, you know, uh, uh, blackening it like frostbite. And she's yelling a blue streak. Ah! Oh, no, you're up. You've got two of them on you. All right. Um, I am going to. Um, can I kick that guy first? Sure. Here it comes. All right. Um, uh, 11. That's a miss. I'm going to hit him again. Okay. And with a 19. 19 is a hit. How much damage? Nine damage. That's enough. You kick her real hard again in the face. This is the one that you kicked in the face. Blood was pouring down her. You kick her in the head and you can feel that that mastoid bone just shatter underneath and pieces of it go go crunching into uh, her brainstem as she falls backward as if polaxed. This one looks over and is like, huh? Huh? I still feel bad about fighting hobbits. <laughs> uh, well, they don't feel bad about fighting you. This one lets out a scream. He's like, you killed my friend. I'm going to kill you. And I'm gonna, then I'm going to eat your brain. So he tries to stab you. Uh, a natural one. Let's try to confirm. Does 13 hit you? No, sir. That is a melee fumble. Uh, who was that? You are grazed by your own weapon and dazed for 1d3 rounds. So let's see how that works out. Uh, <laughs> uh, for one round. So it is dazed. So he, uh, he takes a wild swipe at you, comes back, and it punches himself in the face with the hilt of that long dagger that he's trying to stab you. Uh, and he is uh, now um, dazed for one round. It's funny, except I've been there <laughs> all right Oop. okay one round day so he's just like staggering around like oh what happened that does, one's dead this does one that, 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 that mean i get an attack of upper two, two no not in this case no you i mean but i mean as a daze he's gonna have a lot of i mean you're gonna have an easy time of it next time uh, he's going to step, oh yeah, he's going to step forward five foot step. Well, no, it doesn't matter. He's going to run up here and he's going to loose another thing this time at Wraith. Uh, but miss Wraith, you feel a uh, sling stone go flying over your head from left to right. Arendar. All right. Um, I'm trying to finish this one off. She's pretty hurt. You can see Vondrum's just twisting that spear in there. Oh, that'll do it. You uh, you just turn around uh, as she's as she's the uh, the the Hobbit is reaching around trying to remove the spear. Vondrum's like, no, no, I've got you. And you just come around. Whoop! Head comes clean off. Pop! And then she goes down. You can still move if you want. Tip my hat to Vondrum. Say thanks for holding her for me. And then uh, I'm going to move off. Straight north? That way. Okay. All right, Poe. I don't know if I can, I got a 30 foot move, actually. Maybe I can. <clears throat> I'm going to do. Uh... Oh, actually, I've got 40 anyway. I forget about that. Somewhere, no, I don't have that. All right, never mind. Um, I'm going to move 30, which is 10, 20, 30. And I don't think that's enough. No, so that's all I can do. Okay, I'm just moving towards this one. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. She's she's got another one of those sling stones in there, and she's just smiling at you as you approach. Wraith, what do you do? I'm gonna move to here. All right. I'm gonna shoot this one. Okay. Eleven's uh, gonna miss. Uh, is that it? Yeah, and I, um, the movement here was to try to get some kind of cover from the horse. From the horse. All right, sounds good. You can get some. You can, you got some cover there. Uh, Titus, you're up. Good grief. I'm sitting out here in the open again. Use the horse for cover. <laughs> I can't do that. I need him for glue. <laughs> um, I am going to send some love to Poe in the form of healing. Okay. With a heavenly fire. All right. 21 range touch. Does that uh, hit you, Poe? I think it does. Yep. All right. Three points if you're a good creature. Uh, oh, I'm not a good creature. <laughs> I'm neutral. Oh, no. Titus, what does that mean? Uh, Nothing. It has no effect. Oh, man. Oh, Dang. man. I didn't know. <laughs> Not that it's any of my business. You do what you want to do. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, all right. So, yeah. So, you hit him with the heavenly fire, but it has no effect. Wow. Really? Yep. Damn. Because he's not a good, he's not a Poe is not a good creature. He's a neutral creature. He's a, I th wait a, he's minute, a nuke. Wait a minute. I think he's good. Does yeah, but I mean, it, for something? I think I'm a millionaire, but, uh, well, you know, I can't take that to the bank. Can I borrow some money? <laughs> sure. <laughs> you can borrow all you want. I borrow, I mean, give. <laughs> um, all right. So their turn. So she's going to loose a stone at Poe. Uh, continue that. 15 hit you? Gordon, is a 15 hit you? Uh, uh, yes. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, my AC is 15. Is that? That's yes. it. Yep. Another eight points. Kabam! And she's going to laugh and run around this rock. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um. <clears throat> hey, Gordon, your number on your... Uh... Thing at the bottom shows you have a twelve AC, like for your name. Yeah, I've got I've got a, a medallion of shield that I don't have that reflects that. I need to change. I need to change that. And that one's gonna throw a uh, a sling stone at Wraith. Twenty five Wraith. What was the cover that I get from the horse? Uh, I would say. That better be a very big horse. Plus two. I would. Okay, I, it, that hits. I, don't I mean, it's not as it's not as good a cover as a as a giant rock, but uh, it's not it's not nothing. That hits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, four points minimum damage. The, I think those are the last of my guys. Oh, wait, I wasn't supposed to. It wasn't his turn. Sorry, take that back. Uh, it was not his turn. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, Dodge is flying back this way towards Titus. Did you see that? Did you see that? I hit him. I hit him with my uh, with my fire breath. I, I, I think I probably killed him. Bondrum, what do you do? I'm going to unmute myself. Okay. Good <laughs> start. Uh, I'm going to charge up to here. Actually, I don't. I just can move at my normal speed and attack with my spear. This okay. Here. All right. Now he is dazed. 
So Actually, let's... I'm here. So am I flanking? Because that was 25. Is that flanking? Uh, not quite. If you were to like move a little bit further north, and you might be able to pull that off. And or if I you can't. go, I that's can't. as far that's, as you could go. Yeah, that's, that's not. Yeah, little... that's not flanking. That's cool. What's the day's condition do for me? Does it help at all for hitting? Uh, oh, it's probably. I'm sure it's going to help. Uh, days creatures creature is unable to act normally. A days creature can take no actions, but has no penalty to AC. Uh, so he's just sort of staggering around after after punching himself in the face with his dagger hammer. Uh, that's a hit. Woo! Okay. Let's go down and repeat some rolls. We got that baby. And we All got right. that baby. All right. Wow. Uh, seven points. He staggers backward. That didn't hurt him as much. He's sort of like stumbling around. You kind of you couldn't get a good get a, a solid spike into him, but he's uh, he's still dazed for the rest of this round. So uh, who knows what kind of crazy shit will happen to him, especially with Ono right there. Ono, what are you going to do? If Ono moves a little bit, then Ono gets flanking, I'm right? Probably. Yeah, Ono could get flanking if he was just take a five, uh, foot, step. five foot step to here. All right. Um, I was going to move here. Okay. And kick kick that guy a lot. Okay. Plus two. Let's see. Um, I, I, I'm gonna do, do my crane style strike. And I think like twelve. I, uh, twelve is gonna miss. I think you need to move to here to get the, the benefit. Hang on. Twelve. Did you, uh, twelve? You get to a fourteen with flanking. Uh, but that's even fourteen is not enough. His, his, he's got an AC of eighteen. Days does not. Uh, reduces AC. He just can't really. Do yeah. Um, I'm gonna. Kick, I'm gonna kick him again. Yep. With um, furious anger. Oh, another twelve. Two swings and misses. Sorry, Ono. All right. Lothar? It's his. I'm sorry. Can you say Lothar? <laughs> He uh uh so uh he can't do anything, but the other guy is now going to do the sling stone at Wraith at minus two. Fifteen hit you? No. Okay. Uh so he missed. Arendar, you're up. It's good that you went to that horse, otherwise I'd hit you. No. All right. Um would it, would it have? Yeah, oh yeah, seventeen. Seventeen, 17 would have hit, yeah. Bounces off the saddle. <clears throat> Why do you want to go and hurt him? Okay. I am doing a full run to get to there. So if that guy has a melee weapon, he can take an attack of opportunity. Uh, he does, but he doesn't have it in his hand. He's been using his sling, so... He's not going to take that attack of opportunity. I'm done. All right, Poe. I'm going to burst. Okay. Uh, ten. So <clears throat> I can't exclude, but nothing is really hurt around me, and nothing, nobody else but the horse is hurt, right? Uh, just the horse, I think. Yeah. It is you and the horse. Okay. Uh, me and the horse get five points. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Our horse is back to full. Were you actually wanting to exclude the horse if you could? <laughs> nope. He hates horses. <laughs> Am you, you equine bastard. Um, Wraith, what are you doing? I'm going to move. I was going to say, you just saw your brother running directly through here. the line of fire. And then I'm okay. going to shoot that guy. Okay. And this would be with flanking, so the attack will be at plus two. Okay, it'll hit. 20 will hit. Five so, points of damage and three sneak attack. Six points of damage and three sneak attack. I'm within 30 feet of him. Oh, that's right. Okay, so total of uh, nine points. Okay, the arrow goes slamming into him, and he's like, oh, God dang it. Stupid whatever you guys are. Uh, Titus. Titus? Uh, Are you there, buddy? Yeah. Just. I, 
guess I am going to shoot a spell at hello blank do something. Uh, at this guy? Yes. Okay. I am going to magic missile. Uh, six points of force damage. That hit him. He felt it. Uh, he's still up, though. Still holding his water. Titus, you going to move or anything like that? Uh, uh, yeah. I guess uh, I will hide behind Poe. Okay. That's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stick it close. All right, it's their turn. Do I have any? Yeah, she's the last one. Uh, so she is going to one, two, three, four, five. And she's going to try and hit Arendar with a sling stone. 22 hit you, Arendar? Nope. Nope. Oh, so. I'm getting closer. All right. And she's like, yeah, I missed. Dodge is like, hey, Titus, where are you going? And he flies over next to you. Uh, and it's Vondrum's turn. What about this guy up here? He a, here she, he's here. still there. He just got hit by he just got hit by Titus zapped him with a magic missile. And he's but he's not dazed anymore. So he's got that uh that blade in his hand, and he's okay. looking, he's Everybody. probably gonna try and stab Ono again. I thought Ono he was get a turn. I didn't Box know. Okay. Water. I'm poking at him again. Ooh, that's a hit. A successful poke. This could do him. Did you charge your uh, thing? Yep. I get okay. seven a day. Yep. And they're swift action. Nine. That did it. It was the cold damage that got him. You stabbed him, and uh, it was like a shoulder wound, but the cold damage seeped up through there, and you could see it sort of freeze his jaw, and his eye turn blue, and uh, you're guessing that it froze his brain. He pulled the spear out, and he falls to the ground. Yay! Woo oh, no. Now's yes, your chance right. to take revenge on Vondra. Um, while no one's looking. Okay, um, so he's gone. And he is gone. Yep. Um, who else is attacking my friends? Um, well, this this guy right here is in between Arendar and Rafe, and and probably a more dangerous place to be. You could not think of. Um. um so I, I, I'm gonna assume that he's gonna um not be with us long. Um, <laughs> oh, what's this one been doing? Uh, she just slung a sling stone at Arendar, and it went over his head. All right. Um, if there are no no more, um, do I see it any more? Uh, uh, give me a perception check because there's a lot of things in the way between you and this. All right. Um, hold on. Oh yeah, you could see her over there. She's she just uh, she just uh, slung a stone at Arendar and uh, is reloading her sling. Okay. Well then, you know, um, I'm. But she's kind I of far want... away. Okay, I, I'm irked that people would, would, would that would try to hurt my my, my friends. I will um s start to move toward here. Okay. Um, how far can I I, I, I go? Uh, what's your your speed is forty, right? Hey, you promised you weren't going to bring that up. <laughs> Can I move to I? Uh, uh... Your speed is forty, right? Yes. Okay, so you move to here, and then from here, yeah, I think you can get to here. Um, right. She's got a. She's got a. Uh, well, I think yeah. So she's got a uh, a sling in her hand, so she can't do an attack of opportunity, and nobody else can. Uh, so yeah, you could get there, but that's it for you. All right. Uh, all right, this guy. What's he gonna do? Make him you. He's gonna try and stab Arendar. Uh, he doesn't like him, and he wants to stab him. I would stab him. Twenty-one? Nope. 
Uh, and then he's going to take a five foot step against the rock to try and get out of, he doesn't want to get flanked. <laughs> uh, Arendar. Oh, I guess he's still flanked though. I'm going to take a five foot step up to here. <laughs> yep. And then, uh, can I take a swing. So this will be a plus two. Mm, yep. Uh, miss. miss. Your Volcata bounces off that rock and it ruins your strike. Poe. Okay, I'm going to try to hit something. Oh. All right. I'm going to go over there. Okay. Do a little spear stab. Yeah, actually, can I go over? I can't really go over Aaron Dar, can I? Uh, no, you got to go around side him. He's medium sized, so. Yeah, all right, so and it's and it's a hobbit, so it's small. So yeah, you're gonna have to go around the size. You just can't get the angle. Right. Twenty's yeah. a hit, finally for you. All right. Ooh, dang, a tough yeah. hit. Fourteen didn't kill him, but uh. But that uh, uh, you let some guts out of him, and uh, it, it, it is not that hobbit is is uh, screeching uh, uh, like a like a banshee. Wraith. So from where I am, you totally I have, you're still I have flanking. flanking and a direct yeah. and a direct path, right? Yep. Yeah, that okay. hobbit made a couple of critical errors. So I'm gonna rapid shot. Okay. Ooh. All right. So 12 to hit is gonna miss. 24 to hit is gonna hit. So, so three, four, five, six. Six damage. That's going to put him down. He had five left. Boom. He drops. Arrow takes him in the neck uh, and he falls down and uh, onto the ground. And then, well, no, never mind. Okay. You're going to move the, or, no, or you rap, can't? Rapid shot is a full round action. I can't move. Gotcha. Titus, you just saw Wraith put that one down. There's one left. Oh, no. Oh, no. Looks like he may be kicking it into next week. What do you do? Hey, when does this round end? It's after 11. Uh, we're close. There's one left. Okay. Then, uh, I'm going to try to, hmm, I don't know if I could fling a crossbow okay. bolt over. There's a, uh, the problem with firing a crossbow is Ono, uh, and, well, and Arendar, they're all in the way. And the target is small. You little bastards. You're always trying to get in my way. Um, <sighs> I will take a position behind Arendar and okay. um, and say, "Go get him, buddy." <laughs> All right, encouragement. Um, this one is going. She's going to take a five foot step to here. And she's going to try and stab Ono. She drops her, uh, as part of her move action, she draws her long knife and uh, is going to get stabby with Ono but and miss. Dodge follows Titus. Uh, Vondrum. I don't even know where you are. Oh, you're way, you're way over there. Yeah, Von, Bonnie's, uh, he knows that they've got this gal cornered. And um, I'm going to suggest, <clears throat> make her talk. I'm going to walk over here. I'm going to grab Wraith's horse and bring it over here in line. I'm going to jump on mine. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, oh, no. You hear Vondrum yell out, grab her and make her talk. All right. Um, Not sure what that means. Um, so you're gonna, okay. She? She. He. Uh, no, it's a, it's a female hobbit. Okay. Um, uh. okay, just pretend she gave you consent. <laughs> I just, I mean, I, I have a trouble. I, I, I have trouble kick, kicking or hitting a young female short person. <laughs> um, um, You've already done it successfully. Well, would it make you feel better uh -huh. if you knew she'd cut she'd your balls right. off? Yeah. When it's her, her turn. teeth are filed off. <laughs> I'll do it for you, Alex. I don't have that. that issue. Right. Um, yeah, she um, looks like um, this. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Um, 
All right. I <laughs> pick her twice. All right. The boot of doom. <laughs> um, what if I was a hit? Yeah. And max damage. So that's 10 points. Yes, sir. Okay. Ow! That really hurt. And again? Yep. 21 also hit. Another max damage for another 10. And not enough to kill her. But her, I mean, you're kicking her so hard. Her head is like flicking back with each boot. She staggers backwards. She's got this knife in her hand. She's like, oh, my God. I just got kicked twice in the face. There's more where that came from. Stand down. Uh, Arendar, what do you do? I have trouble hitting a female halfling. Max damage, max damage. <laughs> so you, apparently, you don't have that. You much seem trouble. really freaking good at it. <laughs> <laughs> what the now, Arendar, how are you getting there? Right, like through the bottom edge of. Uh, so she gets an attack of opportunity. Okay. I will take it. 14. No. And then she gets okay. another one because I'm going to try to grapple her. Okay. Well, she doesn't. She only gets she one. She doesn't get a second grapple. one, so she's already. Yeah. She already All right, played. so you're going to try and grab. You're going to try and grab her. Okay, so. Uh, My CMB. Okay. Versus her CMD. I know. I'm looking it up. Uh, where is that CMD? Okay, I see. I see what her CMD is. What's your CMB? Ten. This could go a lot of different ways. Okay, didn't do it. Ooh, natural two. No, you did not beat her CMB, and she slaps away yeah. your hand. And I'm going to tell Oh no, grab her. I want her to talk. Poe, what are you going to do? Now, keep in mind, Poe, uh, before you take your turn, I just want to alert you that this individual, this individual hobbit has probably bounced two, maybe three sling stones off you. Right. I don't know if you're feeling all that charitable. Uh, I need a DC 17 wolf save. I'm going to cast hold person on her. Hold person? Uh, will save. Let's see what their will saves are. Not great, Bob. Uh, okay, so here we go. 12. Okay, so hold person. She misses her save. Hold person does what? Just like paralyzation, right? Yeah, she's pretty much helpless. Uh, paralyzed and freezes in place. Gets where breathes normally, uh, uh, does not provoke attack, and cannot... Uh, okay, so she is stuck. Uh, and we will drop out of initiative and... and probably drop out of games it's as Andrew pointed out it is well after 11 uh she is frozen uh and standing between Arantar and Arandar and Ono as Ono rears back for the final face kick uh yeah. of the evening and we will stop there does that sound okay sure. thank you so much all right thank you guys this is awesome thank you Thanks, um, Les. Les, Later, uh, great games thanks buddy week. Uh, thank you thank you all right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the uh, recording.